Hello, hello. No one in yet, so I think I'll just start with the game. Why is my camera wonky? Uh -uh. It's as straight as it'll get. Right. Okay. That's bright. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I thought I'd lost my save. Okay, so we're on Haruwe Shigima. And we were talking on the bridge, weren't we? So we'll start with that. Uh, some of your previous events. Despite being obtained, the, having obtained the curse of the haunting clappers, Haruwe uh, Shigima is determined to use the rite of resurrection by stealing the remaining curse stones. She instructs her private investigator, Richter, to find the other curse bearers. Resume. Uh, mm. Start from the beginning. Because obviously we have to redo it and find what what we didn't do. To complete this scene. Oh, from here. Okay. It's almost. It's been almost an hour since Richard left. He promised he'd call me if anything happened, but he hasn't. So all I can do is wait and wait. I know it's dangerous to go out, but I can't just sit here and let this opportunity pass me by. I have to look for her, for Michio Shiraishi. But first I need to find some more soldier eggs. Right, so I need to look at Pepper. Must have fallen off the chair. I need it. It's the newspaper. I only leave them here for guests. I hardly read them myself. I don't think I've taken the time to go over one in years, in fact. It's not like I have anything better to do. Um, so education. Everyone attends high school now, even girls, universal education policy, they call it. The country's gotten rich enough that every child can go to school. Education is the backbone of modern society. If you want to work for a good company, you have to get into a good university. With more people in the running than ever, the competition to get into those universities, universities has gotten fierce, though. The new generation is rebelling. Schoolyard violence and delinquency is on the rise. But my boy was too sensible to get mixed up in any of that. I don't want to read anymore. It'll only remind me of him. Distract myself somehow. I don't want to be alone with my thoughts. Maybe reading the newspaper will take my mind off things. Yes, because I need to find out more about society. It's like the big city's biggest problem right now is pollution. I remember how the air and water used to be even more polluted. The river was covered in scum from all the sewage and industrial waste, and it stank so badly it would make my eyes water. Eventually, people started getting sick, and it couldn't be ignored anymore. Fortunately, it's gotten better since then. Although the air around the industrial district is still filthy with gas and smoke. Hmm. There's one thing Honjo never wants for, it's horrific crimes. I found a police officer dead in a local park just the other day. A lot of my family are in the police, I hope it wasn't anybody I knew. I don't read the news anymore, but since last year, not since last year, it brings back bad memories. Still going on society. Suicide at local high school. I remember that a high school girl jumped off a roof about a week ago. <coughs> Not a single post on Twitter. I've posted on Twitter. Excuse me. Did they not go through? Excuse me while I check. <laughs> anyway, hello, Chris. Oh my god, what the fuck? Why is it... Well, it says yeah, but for some reason... 
I'm deleting that. I don't know what goes on with my Twitter. It's saying no, it's posted that I'm live playing Paranormal Site, but it's also posted that I'm playing, I'm live playing Last of Us. Very rude of Twitter. But yeah, I definitely did post on Twitter. It's there. <laughs> anyway, I hope you're well, Chris. Happy Friday. I feel like I haven't played in ages or like streamed in ages. Hi, Calypso. It's not seen you in a while. Gonna look very excited to watch this. Never seen it before. Oh, okay. You've you've missed a lot of confusion <laughs> as to what's really going on. But it's lovely to see you anyway. Um, I hope you're well. Yeah, it's nice to see you. Happy five day weekend. Oh, lovely. That sounds good. Do love a good uh, <laughs> when the, the weekend's longer than the week. You've had a hard week. Oh no. Or at least it's a weekend now then at least. Yeah. Get to kick back and relax. Uh, she was bullied I think or maybe it was something about exam pressure. What? But? This can't be right. Her name. Ichiyo Shirashi from Kamagata High School. It can't be. Boyfriend ghosted you on Sunday again. The head is his problem. Doing quite well, thanks. Hope the same for you, and that's okay. It's almost more interesting. Not knowing what's going on. <laughs> they, like the other day, I was so confused. <laughs> I thought I'd like finish the game. It was just that we'd finished a particular chapter, but then it was like all the credits were coming up. We were like, what the hell? But yeah, I hope he's uh, made things right for you then. It's continued from Sunday. Turns out he's not isolating himself due to his dog's condition, like final stages, although I detected something. And he's prepping for the end. But still, it should like let you know. Like, I get I get it when you want to be alone, but tell someone, don't especially like he's your boyfriend. You tell the people that you're with, or that the people who are, who are important to you what's going on, and just say, I don't want to talk, and then leave it. It's really douchey behaviour. I'm sorry he's doing that to you, Chris, because that is not nice at all. I mean, he called me on Saturday to tell me he's got stuff to think on. Yeah, but still. To be all cryptic, it's going to just set your anxiety off, isn't it? All sorts of articles about the current state of the economy. But my paranoia kicked in later during the week. I'm, I'm not surprised, to be honest. Like even I think even the least paranoid person would start to think that like something was wrong. Ugh. All sorts of articles about the current state of the economy. Now that the post-war boom has passed its peak, we're moving into the era of large corporations. It's about 220, 230 yen to the dollar. Manufacturing is on the rise and exports are healthy. The dollar's down from its height and people are saying it could fall further. There's no denying how much the standard of living has improved in the past years. It's common to own a car and television now, and supermarkets are better stocked than ever. I am so freaking bloated right now, it's ridiculous. Michi Yoshiroshi, the same girl who witnessed my son's kidnapping, committed suicide last week. But that means Mr. Janucci was terrified of someone who already died? Is that what he meant by curse? I can't work this out on my own, maybe Richter will know. Why won't he call, or, I've, or I haven't left it off the hook yet, have I? Wait for it to contact me, but he hasn't. I've made sure the receiver is on the hook. It will ring as soon as he calls. <gasps> this is Great Dane. The most precious, the most precious dog that's been his best friend through some rough times. He's got difficult times speaking on his emotions. I think a lot of people do, don't they? He joined himself in work and talking about what he's going through is the last thing he'll do. So he responded every now and then. Why am I not picking up the phone and being a dick? Right. Hello, Shigima residents. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. As long as long as you're okay now, it's just I uh, I just feel really. We talked today. He sounds extremely lifeless. Oh, I imagine like he's he is going through some tough shit when it's like. 
your pet and they've been through so much shit with you, it is going to be hard. So yeah, but as long as you're okay. So you're the one I care about. <laughs> I'm okay, that's good. So what have I got to change? Because I'm pretty sure, other than the fact that I didn't read all the newspaper. I'm trying to think what else I could do. Richter called me out to meet him and we came here to Kamagata Bridge. Richter, there's something I need to tell you. Funny, I was thinking the same thing. Standing around is the last thing I want to be doing right now. This is my only chance to bring back my son. I can't afford to throw her away. He's gazing down at the water. What does he see down there, I wonder? Yeah. The Samida River. The water is filthy and horrid, but at night when it's still, it looks almost peaceful. Can I ask you something, ma'am? Ma'am? Is the Samida River what you Honjo folks picture when you think of home? I couldn't say. All I can tell you is that I can hardly stand the sight of it. Right, should have guessed. This was where they found him after he went missing. Oh, all alone floating in that horrible water. All I can think is how scared he must have been, how cold he must have been. What did he ever do to deserve something so awful? I've come here every day since then. And I prayed to the river to give him back, to give me back my son. Day after day after day. You know, in olden times, people believed rivers marked where our world met the next. So the act of crossing flowing water had a huge amount of spiritual significance. Back when Edo was founded, the people of Chuo saw the Sumida River the same way. They associated the far side of the river with the afterlife. That same place would later become Honjo. All their fear and revulsion accumulated there and took root. But then the Ryo Ryogoku Bridge sprang up after the Great Fire of Mareki, and just like that, Honjo was part of the city too. And as it turned from farmland into a town, the people surrounded it with man-made rivers and crisscrossed it with canals and waterways. When the, those who prevent flooding, that's what I was told. They were, but that's not all, not all they were there for. Their other purpose was to contain all the corruption that had built up on the far shore to stop it leaking through to our side of the Great Divide. Officially, they were a physical barrier, but unofficially, they were a spiritual one too. So if I have this right, are you saying that Honjo is a place where the real world meets the afterlife? Exactly, that's why the right of resurrection is here, rather than anywhere else I'm sure of it. And it's probably why the seven mysteries and their curses have survived to the modern day. And I guess that wouldn't make this spot we're standing now right over the water, the border between life and death. If there was ever was a place where bringing back the dead might be possible, I reckon it's here. It's funny that you mentioned praying to the river that might have done more than you think. Is that supposed to make me feel better? Just thinking aloud, man. Hmm... Well, it's a nice thought. Is it still all that? Stand around's the last thing I want to do right now, okay? Oh, hi, Ace. How are you? Happy Friday. I hope you're well. I totally get what he's been going through, and I get why he didn't say things. It, it was anything else than the dog. He'd tell me about that his dogs are his life, and this is the last of his great Danes. A champion of many competitions and emotional support when Chris was alone. Yeah. <sighs> right, okay. More on the river. Oh, that's right. There's one more memory I have of this river. Do you mind if I tell you? Go ahead. Must have been 20 years now. When I was a schoolgirl back then, the Samida River was much filthier than it is now. How am I? Bloated, but I'm okay. <laughs> the last few days, my stomach has been an absolute nightmare. I don't know what I've been eating. Like, I haven't changed my diet or anything. I have a feeling it's the protein bars I've been eating because every so often if I eat too much soy my stomach just I just start to feel really sick like my stomach just does not agree with soy at all um and it's the only thing I can think it could be is uh the protein bars I have as like a mid mid-evening snack with a with a cup of coffee just to keep my hunger pangs at bay and yeah as soon as I eat it I just feel really like bleh. So, uh, so yeah, right now I'm feeling very bleh. <laughs> Bloated, yeah, just, uh, I hate it. Just, my stomach feels like really hard and uh, and I just feel a bit sicky. 
but nothing I can do about it. It's just something I've always had. Like I, I always have to be really careful with what I eat. I never am, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's just my body hates all food. I like my body reacts to food like pr pretty much every food that's out there. So I'd have to just basically live on dust <laughs> to not react to something. <laughs> How was my sister's birthday? Well, technically it's her birthday tomorrow. Um, but we saw her Wednesday because um, they've gone away for the weekend. Um, and then as soon as they're back, uh, literally the next day, they fly out to Crete to my parents for 10 days. So I won't see my sister uh, for quite a while. So, yeah, dust. Anyone dust? <laughs> Basically. But, um, but, yeah, it was nice to see. We had a nice catch up. Um and uh, hopefully we'll see her when she's back from Crete. So one, we can see what she thought of it because she's never been to my parents' house. Um, and uh, and also we're going to do like a little Easter, hopefully like day out for Easter for the kids. So I'm looking forward to it. But no, it was really nice. It's just nice to have a sit down and a catch up. And it's nice as well because like my niece, um, my older niece and Bubs now get on really, really well. It used to be that she'd wind him up and then he'd like react and it would make him look like the absolute douchebag. But they've stopped doing that now. They actually play quite nicely together. Now he's a bit older. I swear I need to do a Hello Fatties on my greetings on my channel one day. <laughs> oh God, you get cancelled. I wouldn't. <laughs> People wouldn't get it. They won't understand. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, it was full of garbage and ind industrial discharge. It was scummy and slimy and it stank. Sounds like me. <laughs> you could look out over the water and see dead cats and dogs and pigeons just floating and one day among all the filth and garbage there was a piece of my missing classmate's hand what it was almost a miracle when you stopped to think about it what were the chances that someone would find a part of her that was still recognisable and that although everything but the palm had rotted away in the water the part that was left had, had an identifiable scar and that they could tell it had been it had been murdered with the blade marks on the bone Wait, are you talking about the Najima murders? So you have heard of it, I'm impressed. I assume you were but an elementary schooler at the time. I wasn't really aware of it then, I only heard about it after the fact. I had no idea the victim was a classmate of yours. To be honest, it was all a bit of a blur. A wave of chaos just passing around me. Something like that. They said the rest of her body must have sank to the bottom of the river. They came the riverbed, riverbed but they only ever found pieces. Ugh. Everything else must have rotted and flowed out to sea. This is, uh, I didn't enjoy this last time and I'm not enjoying it now. Afterwards, I heard that all the divers who had been looking for her felt ill. A sorry story for everyone involved. It's funny, everyone figures the river's filthy already, but so one more piece of garbage won't hurt. But every little bit makes it worse. It's a vicious cycle. I know I won't want to go rooting around down there by myself. That's right, which is why the riverbed is the last place anybody would go looking. Or so was the killer's thinking, I suppose. The times were changing quickly back then. Things were confusing. Everyone seemed to be in a hurry. Young people were moving to Tokyo in droves. Some even ran away from home to make it in the big city. And they made easy targets for bad people. A lot of them ended up disappearing without a trace. You see, back then, if you chopped a body up into tiny pieces and threw it in the river, it would rock quickly and discreetly and sink to the bottom, never to be seen again. Are you saying what I think you're saying? They arrested him shortly after, from a cheek and Najima. The man who killed my classmate and cut her into pieces. He was so methodical about it, it can have been his first crime. And people began to wonder how many other girls he'd murdered the same way. The police never found any evidence of other murders in the end, but the river knows the truth. How many corpses has it swallowed up over the years, I wonder. The same thought spread, over, spread through over one's mind and they started to avoid this area. So really, this river has been ranked with corruption for decades now. Or at least that's how it seems to be. Well... That, was that interesting? Well, I can see why you don't have any good memories of this river. With all that darkness lurking beneath the surface, there's no reason that you would. Still, if I may, ma'am, I'm surprised you know so much about the Najima murders. But how could I not? After all, <gasps> I was the one who found her. Yeah. What? <laughs> so much reading. It's a lot of reading. Please actually write me a thank you letter. They said it was only thanks to me that they managed to bring Najima to justice. That was the only time my father ever said he was proud of me. Hmm. I guess it just wasn't the killer's day. Sometimes I wonder if he resents me for it. 
Uh. But it's uh, just what does he see down there? I wonder. Is there nothing? Samida River. I have nothing but awful memories of it. Right, so we've done that. We're on Kamagata Bridge over the Samida River. There's a highway on one side and a freeway on the other, but they're both deserted this late at night. Okay. Talk. There we go, finally. Jesus. By the way, can someone explain what the hell is wrong with America? Uh, <laughs> where to start? <laughs> uh, you go first. Please go ahead. All right then. Poking around places connected to the seven mysteries, looking for curse bearers, and I think I found a few candidates. First of all, man I ran into in Kinshiburi Park. I asked him for directions, trying to probe him a little bit. He turned the questions right back around on me. He was out of there the second he figured I wasn't what he was looking for. I got the sense curses were nothing new to him. I'm about 40% sure he's a curse bearer. Then there's this middle-aged guy I saw on South Gasui Street. There's no question about this one. He had one of the curse stones in his hand. He had a nervous air about him too. It was clear he was up to some shady business. Together with soldier drugs, I, I bet he'd make a good target. Next up is a pair, a young man and woman I saw around Rio Goku Bridge. This time the man came up to me and asked me flat out if I was a curse bearer. I told him I didn't know what he was talking about and he backpedaled and left. Looks like they lurk around there often. Looking for kindred spirits would be my guess. Though it didn't seem like they were quite working as a pair, gathering soul drugs in a group might be a decent idea if you could make it work. But with things being how they are, it's got to be hard to find freaks you can trust. They got brass though, I don't know what their deal is, but I'd like to find out. Last is two detectives I've been sniffing around. The police were, were involved. Not necessarily, a body turned up in a local park a few days ago, so they might just be looking into that. Still, the park's got ties to one of the seven mysteries. Might be it was a curse that got did the guy in. And if they're sending in detectives from the head office, then something's got to be up. How do you know where they're from? Let's just say that when you're in the business, there are some faces you get to know. Anyway, that's everyone who's caught my eye. You found all of them in so little time. I really did fire the best. It's all in the name, man. Richter Kai, P.I. No, wait, make the Richter Kai investigator extraordinaire. <laughs> my, an investigator extraordinaire. Is that why you can dress like that without drawing attention to yourself? He's finally asleep. Yay! Not only have I learned that the US Congress people are so dumb that they can't understand how social media works or even the bloody one. Does not surprise me, they're living in like 1945 or something. You bet an investigator extraordinaire can blend in like a chameleon in any outfit. Well that aside, the middle-aged man and the young couple sound most promising, am I right? Whichever we pick, it's still too early to make a move. It seems like the curse bearers are less involved with each other than we thought. Plus there's still others we don't know about. I say we hang fire and see how things play out. Once more bodies start showing up, that will get the pot nice and hot. Once it's boiling, our chance will come. Okay, so I go back to the story chart. Um, yes. So yeah, that was what it was last time then. It's like I can't really carry it on because they're waiting for other things to kick off. So if we go with Tetsuo Tsutsumi, let's see where this gets us. Kettle on, thanks. They are very much in the Dark Ages, like seriously. Okay, Tetsu Tetsuo Tsutsumi, Chief Inspector of the Metropolitan Police Department. First investigative division is investigating the mysterious death of a fellow officer. He visits the scene of the incident at the former Yasuda Gardens with his subordinate Jun, Jun Aryo. Tetsuo Tsutsumi. 11 p.m. Also, I found out through the very app these Congress people are trying to roast that children rehoming is a thing and it got me traumatised. Rehoming? How do you mean? I'm, I'm assuming you don't mean like foster care. Yeah. 
you know you're a job you're a Dutch child. And then you get up uh, what? Seriously. To be fair, that doesn't surprise me with America. <laughs> you use a website like eBay. Oh my god. That's awful. <laughs> no, oh my god. That is so bad. Like I said, it, it to be honest, it does not surprise me. <laughs> so it's fine, but <laughs> But that's just awful. Like, what the fuck is wrong with the US? Exactly. It's just... They... They just live in their own little bubble. <laughs> of just fucked up shit. Can they be bombed or something? <laughs> They'll probably bomb themselves, to be honest, eventually. Like, that doesn't happen in Europe, no. So Europe has sense. Some. <laughs> Some sense. Hey boss, forensics is all done. The crime scene is clean. The other officers have all gone home. It's just us now. Park should be able to open back up tomorrow like nothing ever happened. I doubt we'll get any many visitors after everything that's happened. Well, no, he's pouting. You'd be surprised. Lots of people love that kind of thing. I bet they'll be lining up to get in. The cult stuff is really popular right now. Did you know that, boss? Did you not know that, boss? It sounds stupid. That's one of Bob's favourite words right now. Stupid. It's just stupid. Well, it's not exactly rooted in science, but if ghosts really did exist, we could just ask them who the perp is. Somehow I doubt it would be that simple. Oh, but you know, <laughs> what is this power that, they, that they've that they got their bloody characters doing? Ridiculous. Uh, like here, yeah, human trafficking is a thing everywhere, but we have procedures, criminal background checks, psychologists and legislation to minimise potential threats. The US, let's open a new baby because apparently in some states it's perfectly legal. Yeah, let's just go and buy a baby. By a child. I'll be, you know, I've heard that high school girls are really into the spirit ball thing these days. Oh my god. Supposedly you can call on spirits and talk to them by using a board with letters on it. Wouldn't that be something? You can try it out <laughs> yourself if you're so interested. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Let's give it a go sometime, boss. What now? Stop messing around. <laughs> you really think we're going to solve this case by moving a coin across the scrap of paper? So it's like, <laughs> this. These lips, man. I think you know all about it. We've got to be open-minded if that's... What if that's how police work is going to be from now on? Don't make me laugh. Hmm. So it's like the Japanese version of a Ouija board. Due to the occult craze, div divination has become popular among young boys and girls. All one needs is a coin and a piece of paper with letters and numbers written on it. Listen up, Erio. <laughs> you can't go blaming the death of your buddy on something like the occult. <laughs> can't I? I don't care if it was ghosts or the occult or what. Whoever or whatever it was that did this. I'll get him. I can promise you that. Well, you've got the right attitude, but we don't even know if this is a murder yet. Biases weaken our judgment. Get too fixated on one thing and you stop seeing everything else. Aye, aye, boss. So, now that we've finished investigating the scene, let's review what we know. Hmm, now it's getting late. I figured we'd head straight home from here. He's <laughs> oh, I just want to go to bed. Come on, we've got to go all over, over all the info we've gathered for the audience. But what, be and what better place to do that than here at the scene of the crime where we can soak up the atmosphere? Soak up the atmosphere? The hell, the hell is there to soak up? Oh, see, now I'm like... My, my belly is just not happy. They want to ban drag to protect the children, but God forbid they do something that actually protects them. Exactly. Such a backward country. You must be really into this occult stuff if you get off on being in a place like this. <laughs> this would be me. <laughs> Excuse me? Wait, you mean being somewhere like this doesn't get your blood pumping? No way. No, no, don't turn this around on me. I'm not the rude one here. <laughs> Crimes. Ugh, fine. Let's get this over with. Aye, aye, boss. Surroundings. The former Yasuda Gardens here in Yokowami, Ikome, were originally built as part of da da Daimyo's estate back in the Edo period. The park became city property a number of years ago and underwent extensive re renovations. There's not a soul around at this time of night. Quite quiet doesn't even begin to describe it. Ooh, spooky. See. 
but but the groom is <laughs> This is where the victim was found. It's well it's clean now. It almost feels like nothing happened here at all. But once an incident like this has come to pass, there's no going back. Not that knowing that is any consolation. Pond. This pond, they say it used to flow into the Samida River, but the river became so polluted that they cut it off. in the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department First Investigative, investigative Division His rank is Sergeant This is his first time leading a case It's like he's graduated from Rakuta newbie. He looks put together on the outside But acts like a kid most of the time Honestly, the force could use more people like him I think I've got a bad feeling about this case And my gut is really wrong I knew this would be a chisterous case From the moment we were dragged into it Early in the morning yesterday, a staff member found the victim collapsed here in the park and called the police when they realised he was dead. While there was no obvious external wounds, the fact that he was a police officer and the evidence of a struggle means it likely that it's likely that this was a murder. The Samida office sent it over to us since it involved the deaf officer and we were tasked with the investigation. What we need to do is figure out what happened and whether there was foul play involved. I think about I think that about sums it up. Uh, about the victim. The victim is Hajime Yoshimi of the juvenile division of the Samida City Community Safety Bureau. That's a mouthful. 27 years old, single. He mostly dealt with cases involving juveniles and education. His rank was senior police officer, so he's got to be linked to the schoolgirls then, isn't he? You knew him well, didn't you? What was he like? Yes, we were in the academy together. We still went out for drinks together every month or two. He could be a little rowdy, but he was like a big brother to us all. He was kind and cared about his friends. He looks quite buff. <laughs> For better or worse, he wasn't the uptight type of cop. The man always showed empathy, and I heard he was popular with the locals for it. He treated each and every troubled kid he met with compassion. He had a great track record when it came to rehabilitation. Sounds like we lost a good one. Yes, we did. We truly did. Oh. I knew being a cop was dangerous. I knew something like this could happen, but it's never easy when it happens for real. I know the feeling. He didn't seem to care much about climbing the ranks, but he was at the top of our class. The only problem was that he took on so much. He had the most unfinished paperwork too. I always felt we'd need an unusual guy like him to help us solve all our unusual cases. There we go. So, Hajime was a police officer with the Samida City Community Safety Bureau and was primarily responsible for juvenile and education cases. He held the rank of Hell Patrol Officer and entered the force at the same time as Jin Erio. Hajimi was found dead under mysterious circumstances as the former Yasuda Gardens early in the morning yesterday. Once a rebellious gang member himself, Hajimi turned his life around and used his own experience to connect with troubled, troubled youth as a police officer. While his appearance and demeanour suggested a man who was rough around the edges, he was a passionate, law and caring man at heart looked up to as a big brother by his peers. Yoshimi achieved stellar results in his work with juvenile with juvenile cases, but his, but his consistently sloppy paperwork and less than formal attitude essentially doomed his career and had him writing formal apologies on the regular. He left behind a fiance whom he had been dating since high school. A lot of detail. I love it though. I mean, it's a lot of reading for me, but don't worry, you're plenty unusual yourself. Me? I was the most normal of my classmates. Rude. <laughs> the pa Why? Besides, the real weirdo among us quit the academy a long time ago. There was one even weirder than you? Let's <laughs> uh, finish about the case. But, uh, boss? Yeah? Is this case really important enough to assign to someone from the investigation division? 
I mean, a friend of mine died, so it's important to me, but it's all up to the higher-ups. I'm sure they've got their reasons. Mm. Boss, you know something, don't you? It's all become clear. It'll all become clear in time. Try not to worry about it too much. <laughs> Thinking about it, the only thing we know for sure is the identity of the victim. That means there must have been something special about him, right? Maybe. Maybe he knew something he wasn't supposed to, some kind of secret or something. Isn't that right? You're pretty sharp sometimes, you know that. If you've picked up on that, you should be able to put the rest together yourself. Hmm. <laughs> well, it is our duty to get to the bottom of a suspicious death, especially one involving an officer. About the victim. Hajime was quite the bad boy in school, apparently. He ended up with the, with the police a lot. He said the officer in charge was good to him, helped him back on, get back on track. The reason he wanted to become a cop was to pay his kindness forwards, said it was the first time he ever took his studies seriously. That's a good story. Love that kind of thing. Makes me want to have a drink in his honour. Aw. Please don't make fun of my dead friend. <laughs> hey, I said in his honour, you should aspire to become the kind of cop people miss when they die in the field. You say that like it's a sure thing I'll die. <laughs> Besides, if I end up biting it, I'm sure you'll be the one who misses me most, boss. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, don't be like that. You'll hurt morale. Well, I guess how much I'll... Well, I guess how much I'll miss you depends on how this investigation goes. I can already see it. Ario, no! Why'd you have to go and get yourself killed? I have no idea what's going on in that head of yours. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a sight to see. I can't wait. You can't wait for your own death. Get it together, kid. Sheesh, you really are something. Thank you. Uh, keep going. What about the victim's family? The Ashimi family is from Kitasenju in Adachi City, but Hajime, Hajime's parents died a long time ago. He left there all alone, no siblings or anything. I went to his house a few times for drinks. I was surprised it's this huge, old-looking place. Like, you know, the kind of place that seems super haunted. the home of an old noble family it was hard to imagine him being such a delinquent living in the house like that there's that bias i was talking about if it's from an old family i'm sure things were complicated that's a bias too he never talked about any of that even when we were drunk so i don't know much about it hmm. oh one more thing yeah Hajimi was engaged he's been sending his fiance seeing his fiance ever since they were in school over 10 years they've just started talking about getting married that's really sad what was her name again? He showed me a picture once. She was a beautiful woman. That's so. How terrible for her. But she may know if there'd been anything going on with him lately. We should speak to her. Yeah, his fiance may have been his only confidant. I'm sure someone at the Samida Police Department has already contacted her. I'll look into it tomorrow. Keep going about the big team. Ah, uh, hey, boss. I think I looked into the case that Hajimi was running. Oh, great. That's the kind of stuff I want. I want to know. What was Hajimi working on the day he died? Well, according to his report from the day before, he had two cases involving juveniles. Uh huh. The first was the suicide of a high school girl who jumped off a building at Kamazawa last week. I knew it was connected. Oh, yeah, I did hear about that. Ew. Girl's name was Machiya Shiraishi. She was a second year student at Kamagata High School. Ugh. But it seems as though Hajime had had contact with her even before this incident. Hmm, so she'd been troubled for some time. That's the thing. About a month ago, he happened to see her walking around town. She looked upset, so he struck up a conversation with her. He was sure there was something bothering her, but she wouldn't tell him what. Must have been trouble at home. That's what he thought too. It seems he visited her home and spoke to her parents, but they said there was no problem. So there was nothing else he could do. And now she's dead. Hmm. Then it's possible he could have been he could have presented prevented her suicide then. He must have been devastated. And that's why he was looking into this Michio Shiroshi then. 
He must have thought that something terrible had happened that drove her to end her life, but ultimately he never reported the findings of his investigation. I see in your thinking that it may have had something to do with his death. If I had to find out about find out what it is Hajimi discovered. Right, let's check with the Samida Police Department about that tomorrow too. Okay. It's like it's still going! Oh god. What was the other case he was working on? This one is also related to the Kam Kamagata High student. The troublemaker named Hitomi Akuda. She seems to be the leader of a group of kids who get up to no good. Mm. Juvenile delinquency. Fun. Mm. She was pretty bad for a while. Multiple charges of destruction of property, assault and battery. You name it. Jimmy had been working for her for about six months and she was finally starting to open up. Then he met with a girl the day he died. Well, every school's got its problems. But I'm sure he'd worried. He'd be worried about how she'd get on without him. Right, just when he, she'd finally found an adult she could trust. She might tap out without someone to help her get through this. We'll have to make sure the Samida Community Safety Bureau does their job. But, hmm. I can't rule out the possibility that meeting with this delinquent girl has something to do with his death. Then we'll have to interview her too. Ah, yes, you're right. She may have been the last person to see him alive after all. I'll ask Samida to introduce us tomorrow. Though who knows if they'll actually let us talk with her. That's what we hired you for. Lay a little boyish charm on them if they need convincing. Ah, yeah, I'm sure they'd prefer me over scary looking old man like you, boss. <laughs> Music is very melodramatic. Is the vol are the volumes okay? Watch it. I'm still your superior. You will uh, act like you respect me at least. Oh, I thought I was. <laughs> you were shit. Is that just how your generation speak? You really are a new breed. It's Japanese creepy music here. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's probably just me, actually. Ah, well, don't think you can get away with it, with that with other people. So anyways, boss. Were you even listening? <laughs> I've got quite a bit to look into tomorrow. First, the two Komagata high school cases that Hajima was handling. And we need to speak with his fiance as well. I believe that's it for tomorrow. I'm your daddy. Yes. <laughs> you can hear me fine. That's cool. Uh, don't really want to read that, do we? No. Because we've just gone through it all. Okay. About the cause of death. As for the cause of death, we won't know until the autopsy is done. From what we've seen, though, it appeared to be some kind of acute heart failure. But since he had no record of chronic illness and had no visible wounds, it's possible that poison or drugs could have been involved. Dying in the middle of the park like that, it certainly seems suspicious. We found signs of a struggle at the scene, as well as footprints belonging to an unidentified individual. We've got people trying to identify those prints. If we can find who they belong to, we might be able to figure this whole thing out. Yes, wouldn't that be nice if that were the end of it? The only thing that Sajimi had on him were his badge and his wallet in his pockets. So we can rule out a mugging. Though there probably aren't many people who'd think to try mugging a, a cop as big as him. I've also heard that Hajime got into fair few fights in his younger days. He started judo once he became an officer and rose up the ranks quickly. Sounds like the perp would have been pretty strong to take on Hajime. Time of death was around 11pm two days ago, outside of the park's operating hours, of course. His body was found early in the morning yesterday. 11pm the day before yesterday. That was Hajime's... What was Hajime doing out here at that time in the first place? That's the question, isn't it? The entrance to the park is closed after hours, but it's a small gate that would be fairly easy for him to get through if he really wanted to. That would, of course, be breaking and entering, but what do you think, boss? Someone called him here. It's hard to imagine a cop like Hajime would trespass for no reason. And since it seems like someone else was here with him, could they have called him here? Oh, that does seem likely. They must have been talking about something pretty sensitive to come here in the middle of the night. So Hajime met someone here to discuss something in secret. And then they got into a fight? No, no that won't match the cause of death. There were no wounds on the body that would indicate a spontaneous scuffle. The perp must have planned something. Then you think it was meditated. That would mean they called Hajime to the park with the intent to kill him? Well, there is still the possibility that it was just some kind of accident. 
Maybe the perp tried to threaten Hajimi and things went south from there. We should be able to get a clearer picture once we know exactly what killed him. Great. That's Azumi. <laughs> but either way, I'm so glad you're back in the first division, boss. I've always admired your work. You were like a god to me. You were the whole reason I became a detective in the first place. Ah, yeah, about that. <laughs> People have been saying that ever since you first entered the academy, but yes, that's because it's true. I can't believe you got transferred out of the first just as I was assigned to it. So getting to work a case like this now, just the two of us is a dream come true. Yay! Happy as I am to hear that, uh, well, how should I put it? What is it? Demoted. If that's true, I'm not sure you've been showing me the appropriate amount of respect. Huh? But I do respect you. Don't tell me you're going senile, boss. That's exactly what I'm talking about when you run your mouth off like that. It's getting late. You must be sleepy. Don't worry, boss. I'll make sure we get out of here soon. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I've been wowed by your shrewd detecting abilities all day today. Oh, really? Funny. I've been wowed by you too. <laughs> On the topic of family, what's yours like, boss? The hell is wrong with you? Prying into my personal life all of a sudden. It's just I'd never heard you talk about them or anything. Oh, are you single? Shut it, there's none of your business. <laughs> well, ever since I joined the force, I've been thinking. The department really pressures young officers to get married. I wonder why that is. You don't say anything like that, though. How should I know? I caved to the pressure myself and got married 20-some years ago. Oh, is he Harumi or whatever her name is? Um, is it that her husband? That's what I reckon. I reckon that's his husband. Her husband. Ha, so then... God, you're relentless. She took our daughter and left four years ago. Oh, okay. Thanks for reminding me. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't believe she'd give up a guy like you. <laughs> yeah, I was never home much. Too focused on work. I'd come home late only to get called right back out again. Plus, being a cop is dangerous work. I don't blame her for getting fed up with it all. How sad. Especially when you're out here putting your life on the line. Oh, is that why you transferred out of the first? Mm. It was already too late by then. You'd better be careful, Erio. You say that, but there's not much I can do, is there? That's the nature of our job. <gasps> is he a ghost? Is he a ghosty goo? And he's come to help him because this is how he was killed or something. There aren't many who can really understand it, not unless they're involved with police work themselves or related to someone who is. But wait, you have a daughter, boss. You really think I want to talk about her after all that? Have some sense. Come on, I promise I don't mean this mean this the way it sounds but how old is she <laughs> Jeez, i don't know when to, you don't know when to quit do you at least try not to look so intrigued that duck face was nasty <laughs> what do with his hat, right that's what i keep saying it's like what is this face is pulling she is well she's a bit rough around the edges oh my god just saying that about your daughter i think most men are intimidated by her last i heard she's living by herself and going to college wow a college student men love an educated lady Stop that, what kind of cop are you? Making business assumptions like that. She's living on her own though, huh? You must worry about her. Worry? I don't even know where she lives. Oh, so she hasn't told you. Probably because she knows you'd follow her around everywhere. I would not, I don't think. Come on now, we both know that's not true. Listen here. You may look like a mean old man, but you sure have a soft side. It is very weird, yeah. What, is that supposed to be a compliment? I can't keep up with you. We're done talking about this. Oh, that reminds me. If you got married 20 years ago, it must have been right around the Najima murder. Oh. It's all connected. Why the smile? It's all goofy. You know your history. Yeah, that happened a year or two after our wedding. You were the one who arrested the killer, weren't you? We studied that case at the academy. I was only in elementary school at the time, and but I still remember people talking about some dangerous criminal getting arrested. All that was just cracking the case, finding the guy, it was all just happenstance. And now he's pouting. I'd, ra I'd really rather not think about it, it was a disturbing case. Did it not make your skin crawl when you learned about it at the academy? It did, we were all terrified. Sounds about right. No one could believe that such a mild-mannered man could have committed such a terrible murder. If we had overlooked one little thing, we may never have caught him at all. I think I remember hearing there was only one charge brought against him in the end. 
That's right, we didn't have the evidence. We, I knew there was no way such a meticulously planned crime could have been the first, but we may have stuck for Machika Najima in a cell, but it was no victory. He always had the upper hand. And all the damage he did to everyone involved, especially the victim's classmates. It's already been 20 years, huh? God damn it. This is why I try not to think about it. I'm sorry. Oh, about the occult. Finally! So all the occult stuff in the powder again. Have you heard about it, boss? What are you talking about? This right of resurrection thing that everyone's talking about. No, not you too. I've been hearing about that shit everywhere. Oh, you have. That's surprising. Who cares about people, what people are talking about? It's got nothing to do with our job. But don't you think the occult stuff with this case feels, I don't know, real or somehow? The whole thing started right here in Honjo in Samida City, so I thought that maybe... Cut it out, nothing good can come of getting involved with that riot of whatever or that record of fits. Sounds like you know all about it. Boss, are you secretly eating? <laughs> Stop that, seriously, this isn't a joke. I get why you'd be intrigued by something called the Rite of Resurrection after a buddy of yours died, but... Bringing the dead back to life, that's the stuff of fantasy. It's not real. So don't go hoping for miracles, got it? Well, boss, think that about desert. Right, let's call it for tonight. I'll see you tomorrow. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> like, like. Uh, that's a pal! <laughs> don't tell me you got, you're going to see now. No, damn it. It was that case all along. Bus, what is it? Is there something over there? No, go! It's actually sorry, a resentful memory is flying into my mind. Ooh. Kill them! Kill them! Those who spread lies! Kill them all! You have acquired the power of the cursed stone, the Evergreen Beach. You can use it to kill those who intentionally try to mislead you. Use the curse button when someone lies to you. Green Beach. An enduring superstition. Once upon a time in North Okurabashi, a beautiful beach tree stood in the garden of Lord Shinden's residence, now known as the former Yasuda Gardens. It was so impressive that the house became known among the people as the beach residence. Somehow no one had ever seen a single leaf fall from the tree, as rumour spread of the eternally green tree became known as the Evergreen Beach. However, this particular species of tree was actually an evergreen. So the lack of fallen leaves was nothing out of the ordinary. This has led people to say that strangest part of this legend is the fact that it even became a legend at all. <laughs> tongue hanging out. Rude. Curse power kills by hanging one who tries to mislead the curse bearer with false statements. Resentful memory. He deceived us with his so-called right of resurrection. The man who tricked the people with his false dark arts swings from a rope. They thought the man had escaped the previous night, but oddly enough he was found hanging in the garden of the da daimyo's mansion that morning. The man, a local named Jin Kichi, was known for his kind temperament and skill in crafting Netsuke clasps. While his life wasn't always easy, he was optimistic. The type of type to smile through whatever life threw at him. He was the kind of man who would take care of those who didn't have anyone else to rely on. The prosperity that the Yukio Ebu Ebu brought must have been what fanned the faint flames of his greed. The old craftsman was found in a miserable state as if sentenced to some cruel fate. Perhaps he'd ended his own life, unable to bear the weight of his crime. The dead men tell no tales, and the people thought of him as a bad man even in death. He hung there for days, saw his neck stretched horrifically, a visage of pain still etched on his face. It was clear he must have struggled greatly as he died, his flesh marked with dark scars where the rope wrapped around his whole body. The beech tree's leaves do not fall, and neither did the man's hanging body hanging from it. As the mansion's owner was not at home, another unfortunate event. The people held their tongues, fearing divine punishment, but the rumours persisted nonetheless. <sighs> A murderous impulse seeps into, your, into my soul like thick black tar. Now, kill! Can you hear it, curse bearer? You who so strongly desires the right, kill them. But he doesn't. What has he got to, like, for the right? He doesn't need to resurrect anyone. Boss, boss. 
pas so so <lacht> sag mir, ich will be boo boo. What's the matter? Don't tell me you really went Cena. <laughs> Sorry? I'm fine. Area, yes? I have some bad news. Oh no, your sonality <laughs> is kicking in, isn't it? No, we've got a bit of trouble on our hands. Looks like we'll be working some overtime. We're not going home tonight. Huh, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's ice. Mm. <laughs> dun dun dun. Dun dun. So still not found a body, so we'll keep going with this one. Uh, Suzumi and Jin are sorting through facts for the scene of Officer Hajime Yoshimi's mysterious death. Suzumi denies the existence of the Rite of Resurrection until the curse echo of the Evergreen Beach appears before them. Hi King GB, how are you? Welcome to the chat. Is this, uh, are you into spoopy games yourself? So happy Friday, if I didn't say that already. What sort of games do you like in GB? Curious to see what this game is like. It's very wordy, <laughs> but it's fun. I really like the story. There's lots of detail to it. So I'm enjoying that. But yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot to read, just so you know. <laughs> right, okay, so let me get this straight, boss. The right of resurrection really exists. And to use it, you have to kill people using the power of curses from the seven mysteries of Honjo. And the curse you have is from the story of the evergreen beach that's told in this area. Is that right? Yep, pretty much. You're quick on the uptake. You've been loving Forspoken. Me too. I love Forspoken. Normally I'd play it tomorrow, but I've got to play catch up on uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So, um, but yeah, I normally play that. That's my chill. That's my current chill game on a Saturday. But yeah, how far have you got into it? I'm not that far even. I'm, I've played it for like 10 hours. But <laughs> but yeah, I I love uh, Forspoken. <laughs> yay, Forspoken fan. Yay. Someone who doesn't hate it for not, even though they've not played it. <laughs> you beat it. Oh, well done. Congrats. It's a big game. Well, for me, it's a big game. <laughs> you weren't your usual silly self when you were explaining, so I knew you were telling the truth. I'm never silly. The only thing I have trouble believing is that you're taking this occult stuff seriously now. I take it you're a uh, Square Enix fan then. If you're playing... Um, if you play for Spoken and you're looking into this one. I mean, talk about paranormal. I thought you didn't believe in any of that. It's not that I don't believe in it. My familiar, <laughs> Ooh. my familiarity with it is why I've tried not to get too close. You love Square Enix. Ooh, whereabouts are you from? Are you like from the UK, US, or whatever? Are you just being a sore loser, not used to admitting you were wrong? Oh, shut up and listen to me. No point in trying to hide things anymore. England. Ah, okay. Well, please meet my husband, who is in the. Uh... <laughs> Who is in, in the chat, Mr. Jay Walker. He works at Square Enix. So, we won't get anywhere if you don't understand this. So, listen up. Please just listen. You don't have to keep saying it. I'm listening. We don't have time to waste. We'll talk as we walk. <laughs> Wait for me, bar. This is amazing. So we're going here on the TV. This is totally not the sort of music I thought I'd be hearing. <laughs> I just can't. How is it not stopped? <laughs> oh, this is going to be really distracting. Oh, sorry, I just want to double check one thing. You're telling the truth, right? This isn't a side effect of your senility. <laughs> that dude keeps just insisting on Cedar. One of our friends works in Final Fantasy VII Remake. One of my colleagues works on Finals, Finals, Final Fantasy VII Remake and 15. Oh, how funny. Probably no J then. <laughs> it's the truth. Not like I can prove it though. Revealing the existence of a secret department is against the rules, even to a fellow cop. <gasps> 
secret department. But this is an emergency. I need his help. I'll tell him. Oh. I'm sure you already know this, but this is all top secret. No sharing it with anyone. Right, you can trust me not to. But no, I just can't believe it. I've heard rumours that you used to be a member of a secret division attached to the security bureau. I can't believe we actually have a department called Paranormal Affairs. I want to be a part of that division. Oh, finally, back to creepy music. Yeah, I'm sure it comes as a shock. I couldn't believe it myself. I thought the higher ups were messing with me. It really had me worried for a while there. If it's my colleague, then probably. You work at Square. <laughs> or is it just someone that now, or that used to work at Square and you now, well, you both work somewhere else? Oh, in the American office. Oh, okay. No, this is incredible. That's the whole division. The whole reason I became a cop. I was always fascinated by secret agencies and stuff. You're serious. But thinking about it, it totally makes sense. If curses and spirits really do exist, then of course we'd need a special department to protect citizens from them. I went somewhere else now. Ah, it's a colleague that worked in the UK office. Oh, okay. You seem a bit too eager to believe all this. <laughs> and hang on, I thought you joined up because of me. Come on, boss, do you only have one favourite food? <laughs> you can like more than one thing. Yeah, yeah, whatever. In any case, the official stance is that the supernatural doesn't exist, so Paranormal Affairs operates in secret. Still not sure why they stuck me here. Stuck me there. Those four years, I worked nothing but cases involving the supernatural. Uh, although officially called the Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department Security Division Special Security Unit Paranormal Affairs Bureau, it is more commonly referred to simply as Paranormal Affairs. Only a handful of people know, it, know of its existence, even within the police force. As the name suggests, it specialises in the investigation and resolution of cases involving paranormal phenomena. Since the existence of paranormal phenomena is not public knowledge, nor is it readily believed by the general population, the Bureau's activities are conducted in the utmost secrecy. Currently, there are only five members, including the Chief. The Bureau has a network of psychic contacts across the country who assist with their cases, including Mio Kuro Zuzu. The Bureau under undertakes investigations into any suspicious stories that cross their desk, though the vast majority turn, to, turn out to be hoaxes. Due to the sheer volume of cases, close-lipped... Close experienced detectives without paranormal abilities of their own such as Te Tetsuo Satsumi are sometimes assigned to investigate. The current chief of paranormal affairs is a man named Kuro, Kuro Nakagoshi. He was born to a family of psychics who had been involved who have been involved in keeping the world safe from paranormal phenomena for generations and has served as Mio Kurozaz Suzu's mentor since discovering her. Kuro is an elusive figure very few have met him in person, and he is rarely seen in the office. It is said that this is because he has often been the target of curses. However, some theorise that it is in fact because Kuru is not actually of flesh and blood at all. You see, in his office is usually occupied by a new, Nue, a legendary creature found in Japanese folklore. The Nue resembles an ordinary white thrush and acts as Kuru's messenger, leading to bizarre scenes of police officers earnestly reporting their findings to a bird. The term Nakagoshi case serves as a code name used to refer to cases under investigation by Paranormal Affairs. Hi to Redditor. Sorry, I was I was busy reading. I had a big mouthful. Oh, in localization. Oh, okay. I'm going to be lurking a lot because I'm doing something, but as always, lurk for support. Yeah, thanks, Sir Editor. Japanese 2, if I recall. Ooh. Okay, right. Revealing the existence of the So, do you, you know, have it? Have what? Spirit sense, of course. Nope, I've never felt anything at all. <laughs> Even if I did, I'd be a lightweight at best. One beer and I'm down for the count. Oh, huh. 
that how people in the field quantify someone's spirit sense, like how much liquor they can handle. Nope, that's just me. Thought it would help get the point across. Oh, huh. <laughs> Padding again. Sorry, it seems like I keep disappointing you. No, it's not your fault, boss. I'm just gonna keep doing this. At the risk of disappointing you yet again, I will tell you one more thing. Spirit sense is usually something you're born with. It's tough to develop it later on. What? So there's no hope for me? No, say it isn't so. Of course you're interested. Well, you never know. You may have some hidden potential. I know there's a high schooler who's got so much spirit sense that she works on the front lines. Oh. I say work, but she wasn't paid because it was supposedly part of her training. Yikes, it seems like it'd be in violation of Article 69, the Labour Standards Act. Well, you really know the law. No comment. <laughs> Even the occult field has workers' rights issues, huh? <laughs> talk. Think. Talk. Think. Okay, it's just saying the same thing. Talk. So what do we do now? We've got this rite of resurrection and the curse echoes of seven mysteries of Honjo. The curse is being spread out around the city is uh, a bit of an emergency. Isn't that bad? I'll put it this way, it's like handing out guns all over town. Jeez, that's real bad. <laughs> it is, so we need to find the source and put a stop to it before something terrible happens. Usually that would be a job for paranormal affairs, but I talked to them on our way here. The main team is tied up till tomorrow night. So they told me to deal with it myself, said it, it'd be fine since I have some experience. Huh? What? And that overtime you mentioned means, yep, you're going to help me, partner. All right, let's do this. You seem a bit too eager to dive into all this. You really have no reservations working in case you know nothing about. You said this was an emergency. I didn't think we had a choice. <laughs> I'm just trying to be logical about this boss. You really are something. It might actually be nice having you around. Why thank you. Talk, think, talk, talk. So what exactly do we do? If these curses are connected to the seven mysteries then the people who have the others should all be here in town. Right, if there's seven of them, that means there are six more out there. And we have to stop them all before they kill anyone with their curses. If we can, we should find and collect all the curse stones. But boss, from what you said earlier, killing a curse bearer gets you closer to completing the right of resurrection. When your life be in danger if they find out you're a curse bearer. Pretty much. We can't let that happen. Should you even be out here right now? Hiding would only be a waste of time. The mystery of the one-sided reed is associated with Ryogoku Bridge. I was hoping we'd be quick enough to run into the one-sided reed's curse bearer. No such luck, it seems. Well, if nothing else, maybe word will spread that the cops are on the lookout and people will behave. That's putting a lot of trust in whoever these people are. But it's possible that other curse bearers with the same idea will come here. Talk to anyone you see who seems suspicious. Ugh, that means someone who may have the power of a curse. Understood in that case. Oh, why don't I ask that guy who's been watching us this whole time? <laughs> what do you know? There is someone there. Good luck. Who's this? Hey, you there. Sorry to bother you, but I've got some questions. I'm with the police. Oh, him. Me. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. oh, no, I want audio. There we go. Voice volume. Good, it's down. We're good. We're safe. <laughs> Thanks for your cooperation. Cooperation. We'll be asking you a few things, Mr. Yutaro Namigaki. That's your name, correct? Um, yes, I don't mind answering your questions. You're a detective. Did something happen? All right, lots of things have been happening around here. <laughs> like people dying. It's so sinister. So what to make of this guy? The man identifies himself as Yutaro Namigaki, a 21 year old college student. He was watching us so calmly, we need to be careful with this guy. So what is it you are doing here? Uh, it must be the incident at the former Yasuda Gardens, the dead policeman. I can't imagine a detective would come all the way out here otherwise. Huh? Say, Mr. Detective. Have you ever heard of Evergreen Beach? Hmm. So answer the question, damn your eyes! How about you answer my question first? What were you doing here? 
I was answering your question. I came here to look for the Evergreen Beach from the Seven Mysteries of Honjo. Actually, I was wondering if either of you knew anything about it. Uh, I don't know. Nope, sorry. Really? How strange. Detectives, you have the curse of... <gasps> the curse of the Evergreen Beach, don't you? you? How did you know? Aria, you idiot. Ha ha ha. Well, that was much easier than expected. Oh crap, sorry. <laughs> it was simple inference. I figured you would have taken the curse if you were just in the gardens. ANSWER THE QUESTION, DAMN YOUR EYES! <laughs> How did I know you would do that? <laughs> if you know that, then you must be a curse bearer yourself. I have no intentions of hiding anything. I plan to tell you from the start. Look, this is my curse stone. I believe it's called the Foot Washing Mansion. That's right, but are you sure about this? I'm not so rash that I'd kill someone as soon as I found out they were a curse bearer, not without talking to them first. You're the same, aren't you, detectives? You wouldn't use a curse on a normal person. Let's speak as equal, shall we? Ooh, do we use it or do we keep talking? I think we'll keep talking, boss. Sure, we'd rather resolve this amicably too. He really is a curse bearer. He may only be talking with us to try and activate his curse. I'll have to be wary of anything he asks me to do. I could tackle him and pin him to the ground, but that might have something to do with his curse. Only a sip of the tongue could get us killed. I have to try and discern what activate his, his curse. So what do I do? I know! I know! I've done this one! But before we talk, there's something I should tell you. Hmm? This is my cursed stone, the evergreen beach, just like you thought. What? What? Boss, why would you tell him? So you can't lie. As for how the curse works... Boss, are you having another senior moment? If you tell him that. <laughs> it hangs to death anyone who would try to mislead me. There we go. So if you try to lie to me, the cursed stone will let me know. I don't have to use it to tell, understand? Whoa, really? That's super useful. <laughs> I see, understood. That's pretty useful power for a detective. Now then, let's talk. Damn, it seems I've lost the upper hand. No point for petty tricks then, I'll be honest with you. Hmm. So far so good. There's someone I want to bring back, so I'd like your assistance in collecting soul drugs. Can't help you. Please, all you'd have to do is tell me who the other curse bearers are. Sorry, but as a police officer, I can't just look the other way and let you go. Please, if you help me, I'll let you two go as well. You let us go? Is that a threat? <laughs> no, it's a promise. It's your final warning. Ha <laughs> ha! Can't do anything! My curse of foot washing mansion. Did you really think you could escape it just by being careful? It didn't matter to me which of you was the curse bearer. I'll be taking both of your soul drugs anyway. Wait, no Migaki! But what I should mention is a powerful curse and so simple to activate. It is ready whenever I need it. There is no escape from the voice of my feet. Oh yeah, get out of here. Hurry, I'll find you later. What? Okay. Run! Hear the voice of my curse echo. Objection! <laughs> Sorry, wrong game. <laughs> Objection! Oh, no. <laughs> voice of his curse echo. I can't hear it. Wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. What? Why isn't my curse echo working? Impossible! This has never happened. Wah, wah. What's happening? I don't hear anything. There we go. Now grab him! Right. Nobigaki, get down! God damn it! Boss here. His curse stone. Yeah! We did it! Good work. Give it to me. Curse stone acquired. The foot washing mansion. Yeah! Damn it, why? What do you think, boss? Should we lock him up? I haven't even touched you. You can't consider the assault of a police that assault of a police officer. <laughs> Let him go. All we need is the stone. Ugh, how could this happen? My ride of resurrection. Give it up. The right was too good to be true from the start. I don't know what happened to you, but you'd be better off mourning whoever you lost the right way. Now get out of here. Damn it. 
Yeah, yay me. <laughs> Phew, that was a close one, huh, boss? Probably be dead if he had activated this, but curse. Yeah, I'm not sure what, but something stopped his curse from... Yeah? Boss, are you okay? Does anything... Having another curse stone hurt? Yeah, the curse from this one is flowing into me too. Uh-oh. So what activates the curse of the foot washing mansion and the resentful memory is bound to it. Ah, I see. I always thought this one was one of the stranger of the seven mysteries. Now I know why. This sure is something. What do you see? But save that for later. All you need to know for now is that it's a particularly powerful curse. We're lucky we took it from him quickly. Phew! Curse power. Kills by crushing one who hears the command wash. Uh, her resentful memory. She was an accomplished on Miyoji. Alas, she did not use her talents for the good of the world or the people, but for her own selfish pursuit of beauty. After a fierce battle, the woman dragged herself through the streets. It was like something had gnawed away at her body. Will I die? I've always already obtained what I need as long as I have this. Suddenly, a terrible realisation dawned on her. Her legs wouldn't move. She fell to the ground. What was happening? Surprised, she looked down. Her foot, once so beautiful and delicate, had grown ulcerated and rotten. He got her. She was on the verge of death and covered in filth to boot. Crawling to a nearby house, her breath caught in her throat. The curious residents opened up, but recalled from what they saw. My foot is so filthy. Someone, please, quickly. The woman expired while mumbling something unintelligible, and so ended the life of a woman consumed by evil. Ooh. Well, that makes one stone. Where do we go now? We'll visit all the places associated with the mysteries while it's still dark out. You mean we have to do that all over again? I hope they aren't as ag all as aggressive as him, but people do crazy things to bring back someone they love. Seems that the hatred the cursed stones are imbued with makes people more willing to kill. Really? Then what about you, boss? I'm fine. I may not have any spirit sense, but I'm tough when it comes to this stuff. That's why they love me in paranormal affairs. So you are spiritually gifted after all. <laughs> all right, let's head to the next place. Da da da. When we're gonna go next? Yeah. Sumi and Oreo decide to collect the cursed stones as soon as possible before they become the cause of an unprecedented tragedy. The two obtain the footwasher mansion from Utero. Yeah. Here they come. Hi, Sayajin! How are you? Thank you for the raid! Raid and coming! Hi, Whitby! Hi, Feral! How are you all? Were you playing Nia? Because I saw you were streaming. I couldn't join though, unfortunately. I've been ran off my feet today. Oh no! <laughs> Fanny's ah. exposed! Expose that Fanny. Expose that Fanny like it's no tomorrow. How is everyone? How are we all doing? Our oh, last stream in near. <laughs> this is a great clip. If you're starting soon, I'm feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's gone from Square Enix to Square Enix. So uh, for those that don't know, no, we need a better clip. <laughs> Yeah, we'll do it again. Jay, can you can you rerun that? Actually, I could probably do it. Do you that? <laughs> we'll do another one so we can watch another. See if another video comes up. One sec, because we can't just have that. No way. It's what Jay. Oh, you finished it. Oh, well done. It's always good to spot Jay in the credits. There we go. The Phantom of the Opera is here. <laughs> Inside ah. my mind. So it's a bonus when you oh get signed God, and singing. So in. many of them. Oh God, there is a lot of bats. Okay. Bats. I'm not scared of rabies. <laughs> Rosie's okay, yes, worst yeah, enemy. I'm scared of rabies. I don't have any meal. Oh no! Yeah, there's a lot. Fanny's exposed. <laughs> you got two of the endings. Blimey. It's a, it's a shame Threaders is lurking because you, you could uh, discuss it with her in the chat because she absolutely loves me. By accident. <laughs> Did you do the modesty achievement? That's all Jay cares about. <laughs> Did you try and look at look up her skirt? <laughs> Threaders heard us. 
<laughs> you wandered off. Okay. <laughs> Jay to Steve. <laughs> Do that off stream. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't, he doesn't want to get a uh, strike or anything. <laughs> Kane hit me in the face in Replicant. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, we've got another fan to editor. Sanji doesn't know what modesty is. No, with his, like, exposing his fanny every day. Modesty, like, he probably doesn't know what that is since he was a child. <laughs> since he could talk. <laughs> a modesty king. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you enjoyed it though. You're watching the anime, there's an anime! <laughs> Jay didn't tell me about this, so he probably did, and I just don't remember. But even then, I run in the streets in the dirty. <laughs> Said, oh no, Fanny's exposed! <laughs> yes, it's actually really good. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, but I will after I'm done with the game. Oh, you're gonna try and get all, all 25 endings? This episode is a bit wonky, but it gets better. Ah, oh, good to know. But how are you all anyway? How's Whitby? How's Feral? How are you all doing? You're having a lovely Friday. You're having a lovely start to your week. Weekend, I should say, not week. Wouldn't it be lovely if the week started with the weekend? Okay, back to work. <laughs> Bye, to, to editor. And back to work for me. Right, summary of previous events. Azumi and Erio decide to collect the cursed stones as soon as possible before they become curse cause of an unprecedented tragedy. To obtain the foot washing mansion from Yutaro Namigaki and head to their next destination. Who do we meet in the woods? Do you go down in the woods today? <laughs> of course you do. Of course you do. Oh, for God's sake. For God's sake. <laughs> We're good here. Friday, I'm fantastic. That's good. Um, I'm good, thank you, Whitby. I am currently incredibly bloated though, and having a like cripple, like waves of crippling stomach aches right now because I've eaten something that doesn't agree with me, and I don't know what it is. So I'm trying to trying to work my way through it. <laughs> what brown? Oh my god, Alexa, turn office light brown. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to. Put it over to the spoopy thing. Actually, no. One second. I need to look for... Where did we go? What was it I was looking at? Um... Yeah, so me and Jay went to a little village um, near... Well, it's not really near us. It was, it was a village that I that was renowned when I was younger um, for its sort of link to the occult and um, and for being incredibly haunted and stuff. That brown? Looks more red to me. Anyway, yes, so... Um, yeah, there's this, uh, this old... Um, like, it's a very, very old uh, village that uh, was renowned... I'm going to chat. It was renowned for um, being linked to the occult and it was um, linked to a lot of like witch stories as well. Um, and while you had like Colchester, which was uh, where the Witchfinder General um, actually was based around and where he did trial and um, executed a lot of witches. Um, and Canudan, like the, the village I'm going to be talking about is Canudan. Um, village of Canudan and it was renowned very uh, very prominently in like the 16th century for the witches but the witchfinder general never visited Canudan because because um, he was a fraud basically so he killed a lot of innocent women because he could get money out of it um, but Canudan he actually believed they were actual witches so he never dared go there he was very scared he was a, a prick and a, and a scaredy cat. So, um, so yeah, he never visited. But anyway, they're not just renowned for the witches, but I thought I'd just uh, let you know that's where we went. The pub that we had our lunch in, this is when we went on Mother's Day, by the way. And um, pub where we had our Mother's Day lunch is apparently haunted as well. 
Um, and there's a lot of stories based around the church there to do with the occult. So I'm just going to quickly try and find the ghost story. And I was going to read, read that one. Um, if I can read it, oh my God, the writing sits small. <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember which one. <laughs> you do strike chaos. Less than five minutes into you coming in. Um, no, it weren't this one. Oh, God damn it. Where was it? Come on, Gemma, come on. Oh my god, I found one that has um, Borley Rectory on here still. Borley Rectory is, was a complete and utter fake. I don't know why it's on the... Here... Uh, no. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, it's got the one that's local to us, though. I need to save that one. Blink. I'll get there eventually. Sorry, guys. It's just it's just taking like seriously. No. Um. La, 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 la. Okay, I'll read this. I don't know what like if it's got any ghost story in it, but we'll we'll see. We'll see what it says. Okay, right. So we're going to head over to the spoopy, spoopy scene and then I'm going to read this read this out and hopefully it has some spoopy stuff because <laughs> I'm not reading it all before I read it out. Okay, let's go. So hopefully you can all still hear me and you can hear the ambiance. Alright. So, um, you can hear. Excellent. Thank you. So this is from um, a website called Beyond the Point. So for Halloween this year, we thought we would investigate the vast and endless folklore of one of the most isolated and eerie places in Essex. Carrying on from last year's Halloween coverage on the Lee Witch Trials, this lonely village has similarly sinister connections. Even on our brief visit, we were greeted by the footsteps of demons, animal carcasses around the gravestones and a dug up tomb where the devil is said to live. Canudan is an isolated village closer to the River Crouch, tucked behind the hills of South Essex and overshadowed by the River Thames, than to any nearby town, the closest being Rochford, four miles south. Visiting there was a challenge even in the 21st century. A 30 minute bus ride from South End High Street only departs four times a day. If we missed the 4.30 bus back, we would have had a two and a half hour walk on our hands. It is easy to see why Canudan generated so much superstition over the past several hundred centuries. Not only did stories of the supernatural emerge within the local population, but people from the surrounding area 200 years ago believed that Canudon was inhabited by witches. St Nicholas's Church is a structure dating back to... Alexa, stop. St Nicholas's Church is a structure dating back to the 1300s, and over the years since has developed a colourful, spooky history in local legend. We thought this church was closed despite it being open to the public until roughly six every day. By chance we found our way in, a, in via three equally difficult doors within the porch just as we were about to leave. The interior was silent and empty. Word says that as long as the steeple stands, six witches remain in the village. If a stone falls, one witch dies and another has taken its place. The 15th century tower was built on the original church to commemorate the English victory of the Battle of Agincourt. Unlike other Essex villages, where many innocent people were tried for being a witch in every town, only three women ever met this fate. This suggests that perhaps witch finder general Matthew Hopkins actually steered clear of the village in fear of its evil occupancies. Stories say that people walking by the church- Oh no! Fanny's exposed! Thanks, Jay. Stories say that people walking by the church have been known to have been grasped by an invisible headless ghost and thrown into a nearby ditch and that a grey lady drifts from the churchyard to the river Crouch. The ghost of a witch who met a sorry fate hundreds of years ago. Others say that if you run around the church anti-clockwise on Halloween or midnight, the devil may appear. 
You may be forced to dance with witches, see a ghost atop a tower, or even travel back in time through a portal. Cunning men were actual magicians, notorious in the several centuries before our own. It is important to remember that whilst nobody was shooting fireballs out of their hands, magic really was a real part of life for people in the way that religion is today. One such cunning man, George Pickingill, lived in Canudan in the late 1800s. He apparently had covens of witches scattered across the southeast, and one of their gathering points was at St Nicholas Church. It is thought to have begun the witch folklore surrounding Canudan. Adjacent to the church stands an old wooden shack with thin slitted iron windows and a pair of stocks inside. This was the village lockup, built around 1775 and still standing in good condition. Following the village's morbid past, lockups were buildings common in villages throughout the 18th and 19th centuries for shutting away the drunken and disorderly, thieves and petty criminals. Another creepy place is Butts Hill Pond at the northern edge of the, edge of the village. Partly dried up, full of twigs and debris, it is easy to agree with the possibility that it was once used to dunk the trialled witches. The central village buildings are very historic too, such as the Anchor Inn, which too holds towns of hauntings. That's what we ate for our lunch. Very good food, by the way. In recent years, supernatural figures have reportedly been seen in the churchyard, and even most haunted have visited the church to investigate. Apparently the church is cordoned off by police every Halloween to stop the flocks of scare seekers that visit. The investigations of historian Claire Smith find that the witches were known for their ability to puncture the tyres of anyone going to the village by bicycle. Continuing into modern times, her car wheel had punctured after she has left it outside the church on a visit one evening, after it had been held after it had held up for five years. Back in the 1980s, people reportedly saw a small humanoid de demon running down the central street just as fast as a man fleeing on his motorbike. Our own visit to the churchyard proved eerie, seen in our photographs. The gravestones are confined only to very small corners of the church grounds, and some of them are unnamed, wooden and decaying. One reads, in loving memory of, where the second support with the name on has long since gone. Below it lies a rotten bird carcass. A large altar tomb stands barred off in an iron cage, with a fresh, small, freshly dug out hole leading to its burial area underground exposed as if the undead within scampered away into the night. It is easy to imagine that the devil really does live in there, rattling his chain to through my holes. The church sports the gargoyle of a witch's cat on one of its sides. Nearby lies several graves, completely overgrown and shrouded by the bushes. Our approach to the church was greeted by a largely, large, widely spaced three-toed footsteps. Wet on the tar tarmac road outside, could these be from the webbed feet of a demon? It was simply too wide for a human being. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's that's the story of Canudan. Like I said, it's um it's not local to here. It's actually quite a drive for us. But when I was younger, um, I I went there on like a sort of my first ghost hunt with some friends from college, and then we got scared and ran off. <laughs> So, so I hope you enjoyed that. Was that fun? So many people exposing themselves today. I know. They think it was Friday. <laughs> I love I love the fact that like everyone Oh no! <laughs> Fanny's exposed! Exposing here, exposing there, exposing everywhere. <laughs> but yes, I hope you enjoyed that anyway. And I hope you enjoyed the scene as well. Oh no! Because... <laughs> Fanny's exposed! <laughs> Yes, join a new exposure. <laughs> let's, let's all whip it out. <laughs> but anyway, yes, that was Canudan. So um, I'm currently trying to think of other um, local areas for me to investigate spoopiness for my um, first YouTube whoop, video that's going to come out with the spoopy scenes. Anyway, right. This should... Yeah, okay. Just making sure we still had sound. Because it's been quiet for a while. Midoriche Park. Who's this person? Excuse me, sorry to bother you, but we have some questions for you. I don't think we've seen this person. You're weird looking. Hmm. <laughs> What are you with the police? I haven't done anything. 
do I know him? Don't worry, this is a, isn't an interrogation or anything. We just want to talk. You're Hideki Arashi, right? The historian. We know who you are. This won't, this won't take long. So since we saw you here, we'd like to just ask you a couple of questions. Mm. Open updates page. Uh, is a historian who works part-time as a curator at the local folk museum and as a teacher at Kamagata High School. Didn't, wasn't he the one that got um, threatened? Uh, his recent publication on the right of resurrection has caused a stir in occult circles. Oh, okay. Hideki is a quintessential obsessive researcher. Despite being entirely unsuited for teaching, he had no choice but to take up a position at Komagata High School in order to make ends meet. While having a captive audience in his classes goes some way to satisfying his need for respect and recognition. His conceited nature makes him unpopular among the students. Lately, he is concerned that articles he contributed for purely monetary reasons have earned him a reputation as a researcher of the occult. But the surge of interest in the topic and the resulting volume of article requests he is receiving are undeniably tempting. Hideki is regular at the Kur Kurokikyo it's a mouthful, cafe on H Hokusai Street, where he can be found outside his work hours writing essays and manuscripts. His published books include A Study of the Unknown and An, an Introduction to Bando History. Well, let's get it over with. I'm a busy man. You look nervous. Hmm. He says he's a local historian, but supposedly he knows more about the right of resurrection than anybody. The fact he's here at this time of night is plenty possible that he's a curse bearer. Uh, talk. What were you doing? Now, Mr. Roshi, what were you doing here at this time of night? Doing research, of course. Day or night, information never sleeps. That's an admirable philosophy, you know. Your research has been quite the talk around town. What was it we were... They was... Oh, Jesus. What was it they were saying? You discovered something about some book. Um, book of Fates? It's obvious you don't know a thing. <laughs> It's a record of fates, how rude. <laughs> Damn it. Knew it was something fates. Yeah, that's it. Sorry about that. I should have done my research. But it's true that you found some kind of ritual in that book, right? What don't tell me you want to know how to carry the right resurrection to? To be perfectly honest, I'm tired of people asking me about it all the time. You're just creepy. None of you even care about the local history. You just come crawling out the woodwork when something interesting comes up. Looks like I hit a nerve. You think you can force you can force me to tell you because you're a policeman? You're sorely mistaken. Uh, keep going with this one. Was the research you were doing just now also related to the right of resolution? No, Daddy. No. Yeah, no. Well, yes, that's right. What exactly were you looking for? I have no reason to tell you that. You wouldn't understand anyway. Was the research you were doing just now also related to the? Uh, well, yes, that's right. The research you were doing just now related. Oh my god, okay. Um, are you doing all this research so you can use the right of resurrection yourself? You're a policeman, do you really think people can be brought back to life? Everyone I meet, pitiful. <laughs> so you don't believe in the right. Whether it's real or not has nothing to do with my research. Such things are better left to the occult freaks. Or so I thought. Hmm. Things changed, it has become necessary for me to pursue the right. So now, now I pray that it is real. What changed? I'm sure you can imagine the funds for my research. I receive a large amount of funding for seeking the right of resurrection. And if I find it, I'll receive a sum so great that I'll never have to worry about money again. Oh, uh -huh, then that means someone is sponsoring your research, is that right? So what if they are? You have no idea how hard we work to secure funding for our research. I have no interest in teaching those children. Listen to me, I'll tell you one thing. Those experts you see writing provocative books or spouting nonsense on TV to try and get popular. All of them are just trying to get the money they need to do their research. With how popular the occult is, saying something even remotely spooky can lead to big money. What? But I bought your book! The pursuit of the unknown begins first and foremost with belief. I was so inspired by that bit. I do appreciate your patronage. Unfortunately, however, the occult is not my true interest. The fate of the unknown is to be destroyed by thorough research and deep consideration. His eyes. <laughs> you haven't seen his pout. This pout man. There we go. <laughs> it's as if he's listening. 
He's not, is he? <laughs> no way, I can't believe it. You're surprisingly innocent. <laughs> uh, about your research. What kind of research do you want to be doing? Hmm, I'm sure it wouldn't interest you, but to put it simply, the focus of my research is how historical accounts transform into folklore over the years as they are passed down from generation to generation. That's really interesting. I like that sort of shit. What does that mean? Due to human bias, the account of any event is inevitably changed by the person communicating it. This is not necessarily done with all ill intentions. It happens when someone tries to fill in the gaps in a story that lacks detail, or when something's left out or abridged because of the story's length, or when a story twists and shifts as it's spread through oral tradition. Even when two stories are told about the same event, differences in culture or environment affect how it's told, changing its content. Silly little things can turn into terribly mysterious legends. My research is the study of how history, culture and legend all influence each other. I would so read that book. <laughs> it's a great power, isn't it? Hmm, I see. Take the Seven Mysteries of Honjo, for example. Why are some of the mysteries seemingly about nothing particularly interesting? You'd think stories wouldn't last a decade, let alone hundreds of years, so why? Perhaps putting it that way piques your interest. I admit, I am curious. So what? So that's what you've been researching all this time. Makes sense. As I said, it doesn't matter to me whether the right exists or not. If people in the Edo period believed that what was written in the Record of Fates was real, that's all I'm interested in. But I have to be realistic. The research I'd like to do is unfortunately not very lucrative. That's why I need to take some risks. This record of fates, where did you get your hands on it? The storehouse of an old private residence in the city, just as the public was told. I'm unable to be more precise due to an agreement with my informant. Hmm. Oh, is this the guy that we met in the park? Like the first guy. From appearances, it's hard to imagine this small bookish, well-spoken man being very dangerous. But in this day and age, you never know, I should be careful. Well, in that case, I think I might have a guess as to what it is you were looking for. What would he be looking for? Do we know? Seven Mysteries of Honjo, but he, he wouldn't be looking for those because surely he would know them. He wouldn't be looking for soul dregs unless he's got a, a curse stone. Why would he be looking for them if he's, if he's just looking for like, what is he actually looking for? Oh, I guess he wants to, no, because he's not really interested in the right of resurrection. I don't know. Would he want to look for a curse bearer? Because wouldn't that be too risky? Mm. Go with curse bearer. What? Damn it, if you know about that, then. Calm down, no need to get so defensive. I got it right, yay! Let's show them. We both want information, right? Why don't we have a nice, friendly chat? The curse stone. You are a curse bearer. The leaf. It is the evergreen beech, then. Yep. You will. You show me yours. Ah, oh, this is mine. The ever burning lantern. Hmm. Interesting. Reveal curse details. I'll tell you this for free. The Evergreen Beach comes from a man who was hanged for spreading false rumours, but the accusations against him were unfounded and he died cursing those who deceived him. Ah, so that is the resentful memory we held within the Evergreen Beach. The memories of the Seven Mysteries are truly fascinating, if only I could collect them all. Do whatever you want, but you should know something. This stone of mine lets me curse anyone who tries to mislead me. What? That? So don't try and lie to me, oh no. You, you would curse a citizen? And you call yourself an officer of the law. It all depends on you. I don't want to use it if I don't have to. What is it that you want? The curse stones are dangerous. I'd like to confiscate yours. Excuse me, but my right... First, let me ask you one thing. You? You haven't used that curse, have you? No, of course I haven't, I swear. I don't... 
So that means that he's lied then, doesn't it? He's a cursed virgin. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Um, see, I want to keep it going. I don't want to kill him. I want to see if I can get it off him. I see. Good. Now, why don't you hand over that stone? Unless you'd rather try using it on me instead. You can't because I don't have anything flamey on me, do I? Damn you! I won't give it to you! If I were to say that, what would happen? Would it be a crime? The police are aware of how dangerous the stones are. I could arrest you under Article 1, Section 2 of the Minor Offences Act. Or you hand it over and all you lose is your secret ability. Think of what would happen to all your research if you were arrested. Mm. Fine. You can have the stone. Yay! We're doing good. That's two we've got without killing anyone. And Sanji to be like, damn it! <laughs> oh, here we go. Everburning Langton. So... Cursed power kills by disembowelment. One who finds themselves trapped in the darkness of the curse echo. Oh, I thought it was um, the fire one. So if anyone's locked in the dark. Resentful memory. When Honjo was filled with samurai residences, the spies of the Shogunati lived amongst the townspeople to keep an eye on things. The sober car on South Wari Gesui served as one of their outposts. We They would communicate to each other in code by turning the lantern on or off. Tonight at 4am meant that someone would be having the last sober of their life and that their belly would be sliced open the next night. An unfortunate incident occurred in which a man attacked a woman in a bout of fury. He regretted it deeply, even declining to invoke the right to defend his honour, but the deed was done. Still, he could not accept it. His rage at having been used by his daimyo boiled over, turning into a grudge he could never forget. Nearby, he saw a lantern quietly glowing in the night, and when the sick bell rang, the man cut his own stomach open. Oh, my God. Since then, the lantern could be seen alight before the sabre cart had opened and would flicker out suddenly, even when there was no wind blowing. As this unsettling, unsettling phenomenon continued, the rumours surrounding it grew, and soon all were convinced that it was the man who cut open his stomach visit him from the beyond. Ooh. Yay! We're going strong. Good choice. I look forward to seeing how your research pans out. Hmm. All right. Would you tell us everything you know about what's going on? If you help us out, we'll give you all the information we've, go we've gotten after we solve the case. What do you say? In that case, will you tell me about all the resentful memories of the seven mysteries? I believe they are the key to the secret hidden in the record of fates. Sure, why not? I'll learn about them as I collect the cursed stones. See, he didn't need to kill anyone. He just had to give it to the policeman. But thanks to you, we learned a lot from him. I wonder the mysteries and riot are all public information. He kept everything he knows about the other curse bearers and the source of the curse were hidden. I was hoping he'd at least give us a clue about how to beat these curses. Oh, I see. Then we should be more aggressive next time. Really make them spit it out. And by we, I mean you. <laughs> I'm guessing he wants to save this curse. He wouldn't have told us anything, no matter what we asked. But now we know where he hangs out. We can always send someone for him if need be. Right, got it. Parting again. I was surprised to hear that there are actually nine of the seven mysteries, though. Yeah, that's two extra curse bearers we have to find. What? We've confiscated two, so there are six more. Six. They could be anywhere in this town. We have to find them fast or they may start using the curses. No, I think we're already too late. Huh? I didn't tell you this, but there were some soul dregs in Namagaki's curse stone. <gasps> really? Then he really did kill someone with it. It's not much, so it probably wasn't a curse bearer. Shit. <laughs> well, we know who did it. We can make arrangements to take him into custody. We'll have power and warfare pick him up tomorrow. For now, we continue our research. Right, on to the next place. We just have to cross them off the list one by one. Oh, but boss. Hmm. Good to know we can use a Minor Offences Act to arrest people with curse stones. But why didn't we do that with no Magaki? If we could do that, there'd be no need for paranormal affairs. What grounds would a normal detective have to put him under arrest? Oh, right. Yeah, I suppose that's true. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. Yeah. Oh, so we can't go on to that one yet. So... And there's no, been no dead bodies because obviously we've got them without anyone getting hurt. So I'm going to go on to Yako Sakazaki. 
Yoko Sakazaki research searches for the rite of resurrection, hoping to revive her friend who jumped to her death. To get the information she needs, she meets with her classmate Mir Mio Kurosuzu in their classroom at midnight to attempt using a spirit board. Isn't she's the she's the plant, isn't she? She's the one that has like spirit sense. That that, that works for the police, that works for the Paranormal Affairs Bureau. The PAB. Not disconcerting at all, just hearing the clock ticking. She has the <laughs> she has the five five pointed star in her hair. That should be everything. Okay, let's start. Ready for this, Yako? I'm ready. We're born ready. Da -da. Okay. Yako is a student in class 2C at Kamagata High School, unable to comprehend why her childhood friend and classmate Michio, Michio Shiraishi, Shir, I can't, I'm just rubbish with these names, Shiraishi committed suicide. She attempted to investigate the incident herself. However, she was unable to make any progress and, feeling desperate, invited transfer student Mio Kurozuzu to join her in performing a spirit board ritual. Born and raised in Honjo, Samida City, Yako's family has owned and operated the beloved candy shop Sanoya since its establishment in the early Showa era. Despite her modest appearance, Yako is a cheerful and vivacious young woman with a sense of duty and compassion, so strong that she is easily moved to tears. She is also a bit quick-tempered and quarrelsome, always prepared to stand up against those who harm her family or friends. It is possible, however, that this readiness to fight is more driven by an innate love of chaos. Yako's winning streak against arrogant boys in scraps since <laughs> since she was a child remains unbroken and is the source of considerable stress for her mother. Love the fact she kicks ass. Good for her. Don't really need to know about the school. Boring. Alright, let's start. Dun dun dun. This is the spirit board. This is how we'll be communicating. First, we'll both put a finger on the 10 yen coin that's on the board. Bing! Like this. Just like that. Relax your finger as much as you can. Now for the chant. Repeat what I say, okay? We ready, guys? We're gonna, we're gonna summon some spirits. Relax the finger. <laughs> yeah. Just relax. <laughs> hey, Spectre of the Spirit Board, please visit us. Your turn. She looks really high, or is that just me? Oh shit, what was it? That one? There we go. Spectre of the Spirit Board. Spectre of the Spirit Board, please visit us. <laughs> she just looks so bored, like, mm. <laughs> Please tell us if you are there. <gasps> Whoa, we really moved. <sighs> Looks like we succeeded in the summoning. We can ask questions now. Right, questions. Start with the question you know the answer to and see the response. Then when you know your questions are being answered truthfully, you ask what you really want to know. Okay, I'll start with something simple. What is my name? I think it should know the answer to this. I spectre of the spirit board. What is my name? Huh? What's the matter? How strange. No. Huh. It told me no. Ah, uh, I bet it means it doesn't know. It may be the spectre of the spirit board, but it doesn't know everything. Is the spirit really the real deal? Yes. <laughs> it's fine. I feel like it's giving me attitude. <laughs> uh, what is this girl's name? Fine, what is the girl name of the girl across from me? There you go, you know her. Mio. Mio from uh, friggin' Project Zero. Mio, that's right. Girl, that's not fair. It knows your name, Mio. It even used that weird character you used to spell your name. 
How flattering. <laughs> She's just got such a weird face. Mio. Mio transferred to class 2C at Kamagata High School about two months ago. Although she is an extremely mild-mannered young woman, she exudes a somewhat off-putting dark aura, which makes it difficult for her to form friendships. Mio has, however, found a friend in her classmate Yako Sakazaki and has become has begun opening up to her little by little. The truth of the matter is that Mio is the apprentice of a famous psychic, possessing ex exceptional spirit sense. She takes on the troublesome task of surreptitiously handling spirit spiritual disturbances that break out in schools across Tokyo before they become a problem. She transfers schools frequently as a result and thus has trouble, make, trouble making human friends. Mio has already solved an incident in Kamagata High School involving a female student possessed by a spirit. Although she takes effort to hide her spirit sense, many develop an impression that Mio has a deep knowledge of the occult and the paranormal upon first meeting her, leading, to her, leading her to be anxious that her secrets have been exposed. The most common comment she receives is that she seems to get along well with crows and black cats. Witch, witch, you're a witch. I bet even the teachers get it wrong all the time. I guess these paranormal beings just tend to take a liking to you. Huh, I didn't know how I should feel about that. Uh, what is this place? Hey, Spectre of the Spirit Board, where are we? In high school? Yeah. Hi. Skewel. High school. High school, that's right. The answers don't seem to be very precise. Can I do that again? I'll ask it again. What is my name? No. I didn't even hesitate this time. Is it really you? A spectre of the spirit board. Are you truly the spectre of the spirit board? <laughs> oh, somebody stole my sandwich. <laughs> Huh, it said no? Is it lying? Not quite. Spectre of the Spirit Board is just a temporary name we call them when using the board. We're actually calling a spirit with a strong tie to this place, or one of the people participating. In other words, a spirit that just happened to be nearby just felt like answering. You're dicked in the knob. You are dicked in the knob. <laughs> they don't really think of themselves as a spirit, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Oh, really? Huh, feels like some of this of the mystique has disappeared. Do you mind if I still call you the Spectre of the Spirit Board? Yes. Okay. Um, thanks. Always good to remember to say please and thank you. Yeah, remember your manners. They may be dead, but they, they're still, like, human at some point. Alright, it's time to try asking serious questions. Yeah! Who does Mia have a crush on? <laughs> we must know the facts. Inspector of the Spirit Board, what is the name of the boy Mia has a crush on? Hey, you're going to ask that kind of question? Doesn't everyone ask this kind of stuff with Spirit Boards? Besides, I'm curious. No, 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 let's not do this. No. Huh, it said no. Guess that must mean you don't have a crush on anyone. Woo! Yeah, that's it. No is correct. Let's move on. Or maybe... Hey, Inspector of the Spirit Board, do you mean the boy isn't in our class? Yes. Ha ha! Wow. Hey, stop that! Don't make me exercise you! <laughs> if that's the case, then... Inspector of the Spirit Board, is it a teacher at our school? No. Ah, no good, huh? Phew. Yoko, okay, cut it out already! We made the effort to sneak in at night. We shouldn't waste time with these questions. You've got a point. <laughs> Ichio's cause of death. Okay, here I go. I'll be serious now. Yes, please. A Spectre of the Spirit Board, did Michio, did Michio Shirashi in our class, who died by committing suicide by jumping one week ago, really commit suicide. <gasps> Shock. So it really wasn't. I'm not surprised, I never believed it from the start. Now's the important part. Yeah. Okay. Michio was the second year student at Kamagata High School. She was found deceased one week ago in a back alley off South Warigasui Street. 
her entire body broken and severely contorted. Police determined that Michio committed suicide by jumping from a nearby apartment building. There was no suicide note. The police based their conclusion on interviews with Michio's peers. Michio was an honor student with a good head on her shoulders and consistently excellent grades, making her a favorite among the teachers. Although she appeared somewhat reserved, she had a positive outlook on life and a courageous spirit. Michio and Yako formed a long-lasting friendship during childhood with Yako's unbending, uncompromising attitude deeply influencing Michio. However, beneath her strong exterior, Michio had been pushing herself too hard and keeping her emotions bottled up to the point that they risked overflowing. Following her father's death three years ago and moving to a new house, Michio began avoiding Yako. Although the two remained in the same area of town and attended the same high school, they gradually grew further apart. Yako herself worried for her childhood friend, but incapable of wading into complexities of Michio's home life, kept her distance. The days passed, and though Michio longed to confess everything to Yako, the moment do to do so never came. Michio carried an old talisman, a memento of her father, with her at all times. Aww. Bless her. Michio's cause of death. O oh, spectre of the spirit board, did Michio Shirashi die in an accident? Ah, oh, it was an accident. It said yes. So it was an accident and not a suicide. Michio. Then did she slip and fall from that apartment building? No. Huh, she didn't. What do you mean? Michio didn't die falling from the apartment building? Yes. No way! If that were true, then why was she lying on the ground like that in the back alley of the apartment building? It was an accident, but not a fall. I was better of the spirit board. What happened to Michio on that day? Seems like it doesn't know the details. Uh, where is the right of resurrection? Then how about... O oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board, we want to use that Rite of Resurrection to bring Michio back to life. Do you know where the Rite of Resurrection is? I wonder. Oh, huh? oh Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> oh, that one got me, I don't like it. <laughs> What, what is this? Stop, I'm scared, Mio. Calm down, you can't let go before it's over. Uh-oh. Ah. <laughs> Such deep sorrow, resentful memories flying into my mind. Kill them, kill them, those who hear the sound. Kill them all. You have acquired the power of the cursed stone, the fool's procession. You can use it to kill those who hear the sound produced by the cursor echo for more than 30 seconds. The effect will be negated if you are seen in that time. Press the use curse button to reduce the sound. Okay. During superstition, a mysterious tower going encounter had by a daimyo at his residence in Hanjo's Ushijima, now Kamagata High School. When walking around his estate, he heard the sound of music, much like that of a Kagura from performance he commanded his people to find the source but no matter how much they searched the music would fade when one neared the Warigasui canal the source of the sound was never located the story is also known as the procession of the tanuki as many were of the belief that it must have been the mischievous tricksters behind it all kills the fatal for one who hears its music 30 seconds without seeing the first bearer Amiyo stood atop the tall festival tower. It was her time to shine and she was ecstatic. It had been years since she joined the troupe, but she had to yet enjoy her day in the spotlight. She wasn't particularly pretty, nor was she all that talented. As a gossip and a loud mouth, she wasn't well liked by her peers. Some of the other girls thought of her as a teacher's pet and bullied her. I don't care about them, she thought. I'll use this chance to make something of myself. Everything was perfect. She wore a beautiful kimono and an okami mask over her face. The stage was set. The accompaniment began. She danced with everything she had. Applause rained down upon her from the crowd. Her breathing hastened with excitement. I've got to catch my breath. That's strange. I can't take my mask off. The 
smell of glue assaulted her nostrils. So that's how it is. I knew it was too good to be true. Her screams drowned out by the music as she squirms and struggled. And Mio is giving it her all today. We have to keep up. The crowd livened even more. No, no, please, someone help me. She fell from the tower, writhing in pain as she begged those around her for help. The music stopped in time with Mio's heart. Whoa. Uh. Murderous impulse seeps into, your, into my soul like a bit black tar. Now, kill! Can you hear it, curse bearer? You who so strongly desires the light. Kill them! Kill them all! Information they gained from the spirit board suggests that Michio's death was not a suicide. When they continue to press the spirit board for the location of the right of resurrection, a curse echoes some meetings. One week ago. I was like, what? <laughs> Did you hear about Michio in class C? Yeah, she seemed like the stereotypical honor student in her first year, but she stopped showing up to class and her grades started dropping after her third semester. So she offed herself because her grades were bad. No fair. Just thinking about practice tests makes me want to die too. All anyone cares about is test scores and grades. You hear about suicides on the news, but for it to happen here, it's a little scary. By the way, isn't there a girl who transferred into Class C recently? Oh, I heard about her. She's gloomy. Doesn't stand out much. <laughs> Did you know that the school she was at before she transferred also had a suicide? What? For real? That seems like kind of fishy. Hey, did you hear someone from our school committed suicide? What, really? Who? Who was it? Who was it? I heard that Michio from Class C, right? No way, Michio? She's been acting pretty strangely lately, but I still can't believe it. Um, do I have to, like... Go anywhere? Um. Oh, okay. Did you know I heard Michio's mum remarried last year? They say her new stepdad is a total jerk. Really? How so? Like he'd peek on her while she changes and couldn't keep his hands up. Oh. I haven't heard is an ex-con. If she resists him, he gets violent. Ugh. It's so scary. No way I can take that. I'll probably think about killing myself too if I had to deal with someone like that at home. Ugh. It's so dark. Ah, this is the teacher I remember. Ahem. There might be some of you who already know, but a member of our class, Michio Shiroshi, passed away last night. Okay, okay, calm down. I know this comes as a surprise, but please keep quiet. The cause of death is still under investigation, and there's nothing we know for certain at the moment. Detailed investigation reports will come from the police, so please don't go spreading any rumours. Got it? We're sending everyone home for today. No dilly-dallying on your way. School will be off tomorrow as well. Hey, you, stop celebrating. Show some respect. What? Give him a smack round the ear for celebrating. <laughs> There will be a memorial service scheduled next next week at the school assembly if anyone wishes to pay their respects individually. Several days later. Um, Yako? Uh, sorry to bug you. It's just you seem a little different from your usual self. I hope I'm not being nosy. Thanks, Mio. 
Was I acting that strangely? Yeah, enough to make me worry. If you want to talk, I'm happy to listen. Yeah, this is perfect timing. There's actually something I want to ask you. Yeah? Um, uh, you know that spirit ball thing that everyone's doing? Where you summon a spirit and ask it whatever you want. Ah, you yeah, I know it. I want to try it out. There's something I want to know. Why are you telling me this? I mean, you seem like the type to know about this stuff. Oh, I do? Yeah, you look like you're really into the occult stuff. You know, you've got that kind of gloomy look. Such a compliment. <laughs> huh, I don't know how I should feel about that. <laughs> but you do know how to do it, right? Well, yes, I think I probably know a little more than most. Okay, please help me. You're my only hope. No. Hey Mio, you know about the rise of re rite of resurrection, right? Um, yeah, it's that thing Mr. Oroshi apparently discovered and wrote an article about. I doubt there's many people who don't know. He's always talking about it. <coughs> <coughs> oh no, she's doing the power. Do you believe it's real? Huh? Well, um, it sounds a little too good to be true to me. But on the off chance that it really works. We could bring Michio back to life with it. I want to find it if there's even the slightest chance of bringing Michio back. But how will you look for it? Right, that's the thing. <laughs> Michio, she... I wonder why she had to die. She didn't leave a note or anything, but they announced that it was a suicide. That can't be right, she would never kill herself. Michio was so happy and always looked on the bright side of things. She loved coming to school. I know she was going through some hard times, but for her to kill herself... I never got a chance to speak with her. She was often absent from school, and when she did come in, she looked depressed. Yeah, you're right. And that's why everyone was so willing to accept that she committed suicide. They acted like they cared, but all they did was gossip about it. They put together little pieces of information and spread rumours like it's the truth. Isn't that terrible? Yes, it is. I've heard some that are really awful. In the end, the only reason they're able to say stuff like that is because they aren't personally involved. It's true that she didn't get along with her new stepdad and that her grades went down. But to say things like, how sad, no wonder she killed herself. How dare they? She always told me she was okay whenever I talked with her because I was worried. She would have told me if there was something bothering her so badly she'd kill herself over it. Uh-huh. I won't let Michio's death be written off like this Like maybe she got caught up in something bad Something bad? Who have been talking about that body found in former Yasuda Gardens, right? Some are saying that this town is cursed or something Yes, there has been a strange feeling around things recently And the thing you want to ask is it Yeah, I want to know about the truth behind Michio's death And where the right of resurrection is I see Hmm I don't know if getting the answer to those questions will be as easy as you hope. Please, the teacher and police aren't any help and there's only so much I can do alone. If there's even the slightest chance then, well. Okay, if that would make you feel better, then I'll help. Yay! Okay, then tomorrow after dark. I get this one done and then I'll um, end the stream, I think. So see how far it takes us. Huh? Ah, are you awake, Yako? Yeah, what happened? You can't remember? Let's see, we used a spirit board and I suddenly heard something like this weird voice and then I passed out. It's as far as I can tell, you aren't experiencing any negative effects. I think it was just a mild shock from how sudden it was. Huh? Ah, was everything okay with the spirit? Yep, it was almost bad, but I got it to leave. More importantly, what is that thing you have in your hand? In my hand? Uh-oh. It looks so freaky. When did I get this? There's so much anger and hatred held within it. It looks like a little like tools that we use for ancient curses. What? That's so scary. Okay, you just said you heard a strange voice, right? 
Could you tell me what you heard? Anything you can recall? I think it might be connected to that object. Um, let's see. Felt like I was at the bottom of a dark place and this voice felt like it was echoing in my mind. Don't you dare make me jump again. After that, it just kept shouting, Kill them! I see. Thank you. Yako, I think you may have exactly what you need in order to use the right of resurrection. A curse with the power to take people's lives and turn them into soul dregs. What? You mean this is a real curse? I know I said I wanted to use the right of resurrection to bring back Michio, but... But why? Why me? It makes no sense. Yako, please calm down and listen. Yeah? I'm sorry about panicking. No, it's okay. There is something we feel in the face of the unknown. Long ago, people would give names to phenomena they couldn't understand in order to live with them. However, modern day developments in science and culture have pushed for the rejection of things that can't be measured. And so the paranormal has been treated like it doesn't exist. But they've been around since long ago, long, long time ago. If you just understand, you can see that there's nothing to be afraid of. First coming down is the most important, except reality for what it is. Huh. I only really gave this stuff a shot because it was popular, but you really do have a connection with this stuff, don't you? Well, I suppose to an extent. Hey Mia, what do I do? Where do I start? Am I cursed? Am I going to die? It's okay, I'll take care of the curse. That's why I'm here in the first place. What? <laughs> Trust me. I'll take care of things, it will be alright. Thanks. I was the one who dragged you along to, the, to do the spirit board. It's fine, you're desperate to find a way to try and help your friend. The spirit boards are dangerous, you have to take them seriously. So I'm glad you invited me. Alright, let's review everything we've learned so far and think of how to move forward. Okay. About the curse. What is this curse? Am I cursed? Well, I've only looked into it a little, but I wouldn't quite say you're cursed. It's more like you've gained the ability to use the power of a curse, so there shouldn't be any kind of negative paranormal effect on you. The power to use a curse, do you mean this cursed stone? Yes, if the cursed stone is used under certain conditions, a curse will be placed on someone, taking their life and turning it into soul dregs. Soul dregs are said to be required to enact right, the right of resurrection. Normally a curse is a spell that would only be usable by an Myoji of considerable talent. I believe that cursed stone makes it so that even normal people can use them. So someone like me with no knowledge could curse someone. Yes, but it's still nothing to take lightly. You could end up having it redirected right at you. To tell you the truth, something unusual did happen while we were using the spirit board. It happened right around midnight, I think. This whole area seems to be under the effect of the Feast of Shadows. The Feast of Shadows? Yes, it's a type of spell that temporarily boosts the potency of the supernatural. Those are almost as bad as the past. <laughs> It also has the effect of making the powers of certain curse echoes manifest more easily. Judging by its strength, I'd say it probably covers about a three to four kilometer radius. Three to four kilometers? That's big enough to cover all of Samida City. Yes, I think the Feast of Shadows was used to cause the resentment lingering in the area to manifest as curse stones. Someone did this. But who? I don't know enough to say. But it's likely that it was done by someone who wants to uncover the Rite of Resurrection. Hmm. This isn't something to happen naturally, I see. Uh, a technique that allows one to create a field that temporarily boosts his spiritual energy. In addition to amplifying the spiritual power of a particular area, can we also, also be used to amplify the strength of grudges and desires tied to the area. The effectiveness of the Feast of Shadows is dependent on the ability of the user, but it's possible to limit the scope and range of the spell to such a degree that no one could use it to amplify the power of even those not naturally gifted with spirit sense. A curse stone's power can only be used in this area under the influence of the Feast of Shadows. The effects also only appear after the sun has set. By setting a limit on when they can be used, the curses are strengthened. So the curses can't be used outside this area or during the day. Correct. But speaking of limits, to actually use a curse to kill someone, it seems there are conditions that need to be met. Conditions? You mean like how my curse echo needs someone to listen to the sound it makes for 30 seconds? To be honest, I don't really understand it. Like, how do I even summon the curse echo or make the sound? Do I just, like, will it? Do you mind if I try? <laughs> stop, stop, stop! You should be using curses so willy-nilly. <laughs> Can I just kill you just to see if it works? 
Even if there are conditions that have to be met, the power to kill someone without leaving behind evidence is dangerous enough. In that sense, maybe you really have been cursed. I'm sorry that you got wrapped up in this situation, even though I'm here with you. That cursed stone, I think whoever holds it becomes a curse bearer. It will probably be best for me to hold on to it, but then I'd feel bad about forcing it on you. No, I sense a powerful force rejecting me. I don't think I'd be able to take it. Really? Why? If we try separating it from you, the curse may trigger. That's how bad I sense it wants to stay with you. No way! The curse day might look like nothing more than an old Netsuke carving, but I can see, sense a powerful, resentful energy from it. I don't think it's a good idea for me to even touch it. I may seem like I know what I'm doing, but I don't know how to handle something this powerful. Really? This little thing? If you threw it away and someone had someone with bad ideas picked it up, it could be bad. I think it would be safer to avoid the risk of getting anyone else involved and have you hold on to it for now. Well, now I'm kind of freaked out. Anyways, we need to make it to daybreak. I think the curse should weaken once it's morning. I'll help you find a day a way to deal with it then. Okay, so there are two things you should remember. First, do not fulfill the conditions while it's night. Second, you should should you happen to fulfill the conditions, don't use the curse. Right. The mysterious voice of the cursed stone is called the Fool's Procession, right? Yeah, that's when, from the Seven Mysteries of Honjo, right? 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 <laughs> that's always said to be connected with the story with the same name, one of the mysteries. Right, I don't think it's a coincidence. This is just a guess, but it's possible that you were chosen because it could fill your desire for the right of resurrection. If this is the curse of the Seven Mysteries of Honjo, then it's possible that there are others who receive curses associated with the other mysteries. Yeah, that the vo that voice also said that there are other curse bearers, or whatever you called them. Not only that, apparently you can get a lot of soul dregs by killing a curse bearer. Right, that's certainly not good, even if we have no intention of killing others with the curse. There's a chance you may be targeted if other curse bearers find us. Yep. <laughs> we'll have to avoid anyone who has another of the curses. That means we should avoid people at night as much as possible. But Mio, yes. If this curse is real, that means I could bring back Michio if I used it, right? The right of resurrection would be real too. Yes, that's true. But you can't do that, Yako. But it feels like it's not the time to worry about that kind of stuff. If Michio died in an accident, then I'm sure she didn't want to die. What's the issue with putting a little curse on a complete stranger? I sort of feel like it wouldn't be a big deal. What's going on with you? You're not acting like yourself, Yako. You would never even consider taking the life of another person. Is, is it the curse's influence on you? Maybe the curse echo's grudge is rubbing off on you. Will you show me it for a second? Mm. Is there something inside it? <gasps> no, stop! Yako. Yeah, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. But it's like, I just suddenly really didn't want you to touch it. I understand, I'm sorry. But you need to give up on the right of resurrection. What? Because that's the real curse. Using resurrection as a lure, it tempts curse bearers into using their curses. You have to resist it. Don't let yourself be deceived by some curse. But Michio, Michio could... Aww. I think for tonight we should get you home to rest. I'll walk you. The curse's influence should subside in the morning. Okay. Bloody flash cuts. Get me, it does. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm telling you that you need to give up on the right. It's beyond us. Even a single curse stone alone is too much to handle. Bringing back the dead isn't something so simple. I know how much it hurts, but please focus on just worrying about surviving tonight. Even now, we're in great danger. Okay, let's get going then, shall we? We'll take the same route we took to get here. Right. We'll be fine, right? There's no one else at school, is there? I think so. The night shift janitor shouldn't be patrolling this late night either. Ah. Why did the lights go out? Mia, are you okay? Oh no. 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 <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. Don't. No.
I'm just gonna keep. <laughs> uh oh. Oh my god. Oh no, I oh know, what was that? Get me out of here, me out, me out. where are you? Yeah, come on here. Over here, can you see me? Huh? Where I can't see anything. <laughs> oh, thank god. There you are, Mio. This way, over here. Be careful, your field of vision is being limited. No, daddy, no. <laughs> no, I don't like it. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On that note, I'm gonna leave that there. <laughs> uh, but I'm really enjoying it. It's um, it's definitely like. Oh no! <laughs> Fanny's exposed. No, it's not that I'm too scared, it's just because it's getting late. So, uh, and also, yeah, my, my, my tummy is still a bit meh. So I think I just need to go and chill out before bed for a bit. But, uh, but yeah, thanks everyone for coming. It was lovely to see everyone. So I'm going to... It was spoopy. Spoopy, spoopy. Well, I hope you enjoy that. I'm really enjoying it. Even though it's just scared the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> So let's have a look and see if anyone is on. We can stream. Yeah, there should be a stream tomorrow. Um, music's good, isn't it? Yeah. It does look like a good game to play. I really enjoy it. I like that it's got like all these different um, sort of routes you can take. Thank you for joining me, Farrell. Thank you. It was lovely to see you. Um, yeah, no, I love all the different routes you can take and how in depth it is. It's, yeah. The, the jump scares not so much, not enjoying them, <laughs> but it's kind of part and parcel, isn't it, really? Um, so I'm trying to think who to raid. Does anyone have any suggestions? Because there's no one really playing anything spoopy that I can see. So I don't know if anyone has any suggestions just while I save this. XP Tomb Raider 3 AOD okay I'll send them over send you guys over there then we shall go with that but anyway yes so thank you Cyanjin for raiding earlier thank you for <laughs> all the retentions as well I appreciate them mm. <laughs> but anyway yes so I will definitely be streaming tomorrow and it'll most likely be Shadow because I've missed two Wednesday streams lately, so I want to try and play catch up um, and try and get those tomb, bloody tombs finished. So yeah, it'll be a chill stream tomorrow of tombs, reading some tombs, and I will be back as well on Sunday for Last of Us. So yeah, on that note, have an absolutely fantastic evening, guys. Have a lovely weekend, and I shall see you tomorrow. Bye!